And we are live here on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content actual play channel this morning playing Necrobiotic, which is an upcoming... Um, uh, you could call it a lot of things. You could call it steampunk. You could call it necropunk. You could call it flesh punk. You could put a punk behind a lot of different things, and it would apply. But it is an upcoming uh, game on Kickstarter by Penny for a Tale. Uh, I'm going to let our GM today tell you a little bit more about it in just one second. But before we do that, if you're not familiar with us, we're Plus One EXP. We're a weird little brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design, beard and skincare alchemy, and the Bardic College of Content Creation. My name is Tony Vicenda. I'm the chief alchemist here at Plus One EXP. XP. Um, we would love to have you watch wherever you're watching right now. Uh, follow us, uh, ask questions as we're going through. All of our games are learning games. We play with people from the creative team who make them so that we can learn how to play them from the designers and be able to ask them questions afterwards. So all of our games are learning games here uh, on the channel, um, but we're super excited to sit down uh, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, and play today with uh, y'all. Um, uh, with that said, I'm going to kick things over to the rest of our team so you get to know who they are. Um, let's go over first to Daniel. Daniel, um, go ahead and tell people who you are, uh, what you do, and where they can find you online. Uh, yeah. Hi there. I'm Daniel. Um, I am a comedian and podcaster and musician and um, jack of all trades, master of absolutely none. Uh, and uh, you can find me uh, online at Dantendo64, pretty much wherever you can find someone with an account. It's I'm going to be at Dantendo64. Uh, and that's me. Yeah, I did notice today that there's a Dantendo underscore 64 who's got to be incredibly upset that you got there <laughs> on Instagram. And so. Oh, oh, well, l sorry, guys. I got to go fight someone, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, I use he, him pronouns, Daniel. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. There we go. Uh, let's drop right down below Daniel on the viewer's screen. Uh, and we have appearing for the first time on the channel, uh, Faux Hamner, also known as John. John, tell people who you are, yeah. what you do, where they can find you online. Hi, uh, yeah, uh, Jonathan Faux Hamner. Uh, I'm most active on YouTube, where I do usually Let's Plays, but lately it's been branching out into more sketch comedy. Um, I'm also an improviser. Uh, yeah, Faux Hamner pretty much everywhere. I appear on Twitch sometimes in other people's streams if we do shows, but yeah. uh, you can find that on Twitter. I'll tweet if I made that. Awesome. And what pronouns do you use? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, he, him. All right, and then we're going to get over to um, Mike. Mike, tell people who you are, what you do, where they can find you online if you want to be found. Sure, yes, uh, I desperately want to be found. Uh, my name is Mike Mercadal. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm a comedian and uh, actor improviser here in New York City, and I have a, a podcasts with the Missing Sock Podcast Network. Friend of the show, R. Alex Murray, who's been on many times, is also a, a member of that network, so... Feel free to check us out at um, Missing Sock uh, on uh, Missing Sock Network on Twitter, I think, and Instagram. And, or, or you can follow me at Mike Mercadal on everything, uh, M-E-R-C-A-D-A-L. And um, stay tuned for my returning podcast live show stream that's going to be called Zeros on Heroes coming up soon. There we go. Awesome. And then last but certainly not least, uh, the project director for Necrobiotic, uh, head uh, muckety-muck at Penny for a Tail. Uh, we've got Mitchell joining us. Mitchell, tell people who you are, what you do. Tell us a little bit about the game we're going to be playing today also. Oh, man, yeah. So uh, I, of course, am Mitchell, uh, he, they, uh, pronouns. Um, I do streaming. I do marketing for uh, TTRPG companies. I do a little bit of writing and art direction, uh, most recently with Flames of Freedom and uh, Zweihander and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that's it. Uh, it's, it's just contained in that little box. And I, I'm enthusiastic for all those projects. Uh, but today we have a project very dear to my heart, which is Necrobiotic. Uh, um, the story how that all came about was my business partner, Mr. Smith, went to Italy, and I was jelly. So he brought back the Italian book, the original Italian book for uh, El Gennaggio. Um, and he told me I should translate it. And I did not. I got someone else to do it. But <laughs> I, I did poke the creator, and I was like, run this game for me so I understand like how cool it is uh, before I start translating or getting someone else to translate it. <laughs> uh, and and so, yeah, I fell in love with the game with that one shot. Uh, and I think that one shot is still on uh, the Pity for a Tale channel, like YouTube, uh, a long time ago. And 
yeah, it's just been like this amazing thing about having it finally in my hands in English and reading through it and enjoying it and then playing it. And, and it's just this wonderful dark world which uh, features humanity uh, uh, in the future after like the population has declined and births are, are very difficult to achieve. Um, and so they rely upon the dead uh, for much of their labor. Um, so constructs and all sorts of things. And you're gonna you're gonna taste that throughout the whole scenario today um, as we explore this very macabre uh, world. Awesome. I'm super excited about it. Always here on Plus One EXP, we use safety tools whenever we're playing games. Um, and we use toolkits of all kinds, so we would encourage you to think about what tools you're using at your table. Um, unless the system has a tool that it suggests, we just use lines, veils, and the X card. Uh, lines are things that may happen in the game, but don't necessarily uh, happen, sorry, may happen in the world of the game, but don't necessarily happen in the game itself. Um, they happen off screen. Our game doesn't focus on them at all. And then veils are things that might happen in the game, but we handle them in a specific way or we're we're cautious as we go through or we just kind of hit them mention that they're happening and then move forward uh, we don't dwell on them and then the x card is a tool that any player can use at any time to stop pause the game uh if it's not clear what the issue is, clarify, hey, here's the here's the challenge I'm having. Uh, then we'll just pick a different direction to move forward in a different way. There's no explanation required. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're addressing whatever the core issue is. And so it's not evident. Uh, they'll share that, and then we'll, we'll kind of figure out what it is and figure out how to go forward. That could be anything from a distraction to a piece of content that's making you feel uncomfortable to something that you're just really unsure of. Just a way for you to be able to pause the game and let us know what that is. Uh, with that said, we have a strong line against sexual violence here on the channel, but we like to let everybody share if they have something that is and we, we, we talked about a couple more right before we started but if there's any other things that people want to add a line or a veil around uh, go ahead and share those now awesome cool all right so we've got the ones that we established beforehand in play and then we've got the ones uh the the normal one for the channel uh, and we should be good on everything else but again if something comes up in the middle of play that's making you uncomfortable uh, just remember, you can pause the game. We can stop. We can address that as we go. Um, but I'm going to hand things over to Mitchell just to take us into the game. <laughs> this power I will use with respect uh, and decorum and, and such. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, this is <clears throat> necrobiotic. Um, I always like to uh, bring everyone in, uh, usually with a cafe and, and such like that. But I think for this, a smoothie bar is probably a better uh, better setting for everyone. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Florence, Italy, or Firenze, uh, Italy, um, has these high walls all around it. Um, and it's it's there to protect, but mostly it's there for everyone to kind of sometimes forget that the world has gone. Wait, is this a mature channel? Uh, yeah. So our general rule, we didn't talk about that. I don't. We don't. Yeah, we're very clear that it is a mature channel. That's fine. Uh, uh, we usually try to roll PG thirteen, which basically means we get one F word to use, but only because it's fun to try to figure out the best time. Okay. Okay. So F word. All right. So uh, we get one so, F word. Uh, however. And Depending on who's on, that rule gets blown away usually in the first five <laughs> seconds. Somebody's like, oh, crap, I dropped my pencil, and then just starts cussing. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we, we'll follow wherever we go, but it's not a, it's not a channel for kiddos. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just uh, so, so the wall's mostly there to you, for you to forget that the world has gone <laughs> to unfortunateness. Uh, we'll say to save uh, our, our curse words for the more appropriate oh, time. We can use so you can use other. Like, you can say the world's gone to shit. You can say oh, shit as yes. much as you want. Shit! Uh, <laughs> shit! Like holy hell! You look I mean, outside. You have farms uh, just kind of outside of the walls where uh, people are protected by the walls uh, with constructs, dead, le uh, tan, leathered mannequin-looking things going through the fields day by day um working the fields and then just beyond that you have a world that the wilderness has kind of taken over um cannibals will sometimes like come out of the woodwork and and accost these uh these constructs as well as the remnants of humanity in these farms but they're desperately needed to perform this action for the sake of everyone within the walls um but you guys are in the wall, so it's it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. That's what the walls are there for. You can forget that 
things are bad. Um, and instead focus on, you know, what sort of smoothie you're getting as this like early morning rise, um, a little bit of mist and steam escapes from the, the different pipes on the street. Um, you hear the train, uh, which is overhead kind of, uh, moving forward over the rails. Um, the construct that you are most likely acquiring said smoothie from has like various tubes coming out of what looks like uh the what was once the chest cavity just kind of spooned out and carved out in a way so that the leather tan is just kind of pressed against the back of the spinal column providing just enough room for you to put your cup in there and then press the correct uh leathery tan buttons to show like do you want strawberry today or perhaps some banana um and this whole thing like this thing's attached to like a great tube so you see it stretching out of its back um as everything is mixed and then pumped into the construct and then for your pleasure dripped into your your lovely cup for your for your early day morning routine um this thing just stares at you uh no eyes uh it's been kind of hollowed out so it looks like a a, a very tanned uh skeletal figure with long bony hands that just kind of lay on the 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 kind of bar table um the lower half of the jaw is gone it's not really needed in this case um so the, the some of the teeth are still there um I don't know why they left that there, but you know, it's it's just it might be better for it. It almost looked like they were attempting to make it have a smile, and then maybe like earlier on, they thought maybe that doesn't encourage customers to acquire our services. The smile is just way too creepy, so they removed the lower jaw um, and just hope that and pray that people would still like some of this stuff. But this is pretty much the same thing at er in every place you go. You can see across the street that there's a construct. Uh, with the same deal, but the coffee carafe is just kind of set, heated on in its chest cavity, warmed up as it grabs it, pulls it out, fills a cup, and then sets it back into its its stomach, moving on. So you guys are, are here uh, at this smoothie place. Uh, each of you guys kind of gearing up for a wonderful day of work under the authority of the Citadel of Science, the technocracy which has saved humanity and has done everything it can to um, keep humanity pushing forward despite complaints and, and squeals and stuff like that. It's it's very much uh, for whatever it takes for humanity to keep going. Um, which is kind of reminiscent of the earlier days of the construct where they did look like people and people were just like, no, dear God, this is too strange to see your dead mother outside. Um, which is why they started tanning and removing certain parts of the construct so that you can't really figure out what they were before. Um, in the hopes that maybe you know, humanity is a little bit more okay with it. Um so yeah, we'll, we'll kind of go to each one of you and see how your day is going. Um, luckily, in this world, there's uh, wealth isn't that big of a deal. Well, the main kind of show of respect is do you do science or do you not? Um, and because of the lack of people, like you could have a whole apartment complex to yourself. Uh, all this space and, and lovely old Italian architecture uh, for you to use um in hopes that one day it will be filled by humanity but we're just not there yet um so yeah let's go to each one of you and and see how you're doing who would like to go first and what smoothie flavor did you choose <laughs> I, I already defined mine in collaboration with keegan in the chat um so as uh we see uh uh, uh my name is uh geo del Tricia, uh mm -hmm. and um uh, i am sucking on my awfully good <laughs> banana peanut butter smoothie uh with extra offal uh that's how i like it uh because i like it when the, the chunky bits get stuck in the the straw uh and so i'm i'm you know I'm, I'm looking out the window um over the like the the plaza outside just kind of taking in the sights um and i just found um 
uh, like I just found an old like eighties, uh, like computer, uh, in the mm-hmm. wastes recently. And I've been toying around with that. I'm just thinking about some of the different coding that I've been doing for it. Uh, as I, as I kind of take in the sites, I do do science. Um, I am a techno sophist. So I specialize in technology from before everything fell apart, um, is the type of science that I do. And I build the gadgets. Yeah. And you can, you know, the technosophists aren't well liked because uh, the Citadel of Science have kind of pushed past everything. They're very utilitarian. They they believe that everything that should be used, uh, well, should be used, then everything else is just tossed to the side, which is why there's these junk piles of computers mm-hmm. and old electronics and stuff like that. Um, right. They want to use every part of the buffalo, and the buffalo is people, but they don't. They don't want to use all the old stuff that we use. Exactly. To have. Yeah, right. and and so you'll have a family uh, sitting there, uh, a, a mother and father with like a one little child, and, and children are revered because they're just so rare. Uh, and the child kind of points over at uh, Geo and, and whispers, and you can hear uh, quite audibly uh, Geo, the the mother saying, "Don't don't look at him. Uh, he's 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 of the old world. He's he's not really useful. Don't." I've got just... I've got like a TI eighty two I've pulled out and I'm taking apart. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, What's he... That's disgusting. They're <laughs> like covering the child's eyes. Yeah, they're like, oh god, he's he's too much of the old world. Just, just look. Just look away. We're gonna we're gonna be gone soon. Just finish your strawberry smoothie. Um, yeah, who's next to be ridiculed? <laughs> uh, I'll go. Um, uh, my I, I'm a hardened, grizzled uh, technophant who is a uh, in the techno power division of the Florence Army. Um, I have a name, but everyone just calls me Capitano. And uh, that's Captain. Everyone just calls me Captain. And uh, I'm in this place. It's a, it is purely a form of sustenance. If there was an unflavored version of this, I would get that. I just need the proteins <laughs> and the nutrients. It is fuel for what it needs. I live in this elaborate building that is old construction, but I've turned it into basically a training ground and uh, just like a... a almost a, a military barracks sit like the level of spartan life and then i have my uh my my uh straight you know like shaved shorn clean head with uh remnants of whatever uh technology is being used to uh keep me healthy and functional and i'm just fueling my body with whatever the heck is coming out of this robot man person I, I yeah, do love the idea there's a just protein option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no need for any else, anything else, all this frivolity. Let's yeah. just get down to what's necessary. Yeah, it, it drips out like... <laughs> uh, you can imagine how it drips out of these little pipes into your, your cup. Um, and kind of looking around... Um, you see someone kind of, you know, that that bottom of the smoothie that's just too too thick. Uh, so you kind of try to spoon it out. Um, you you look over to this person kind of getting these peanut butter chunks at the bottom of their smoothie. Um, and it, it, it almost kind of brings you back to. Um, well, you've you've heard stories and you've probably seen it yourself, but the cannibals haven't quite figured out how to get a techno font out of their armor um and so you remember one time someone was was picked up uh dead of course but it looked like someone had used a spoon to go pretty much from the top to the bottom um almost as if you would eat a turtle uh in that way just as you start to to scoop out bit by bit from the skull all the way down and so uh, you're, you're kind of looking at this little flashbacks there as mm. you're like um, as this person's kind of get that last peanut butter like We'll also say I'm constantly torn between the need for both parts. Like, why can't I just be one or the other? You know, like I would like just make me all machine or make me all man. I yeah. I would I would be lethal either way. <laughs> it's like take these feelings from me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better alive, you're coming with me. Exactly. <laughs> I need your uh, jacket, your keys, and your motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh heck yeah! This is going to be Terminator references from here on out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's, um... Who's next? I'll go. Uh, so my name is Portent of Doom Caster. Um, <laughs> everyone just calls me Pod. Uh, I am an architect, so I've um, been working for a long time in uh, tanning constructs, uh, and I'm currently like really trying to develop new methods for tanning and trying to create some efficiencies and, and create new medicines from the tanning process uh, and trying to figure out what I can do with that. Um, I... I Pod is very nervous. Pod doesn't get out much, um, and and they are uh, an absolute bundle of nerves at, at all times. Uh, they they don't they like people, but they don't like interacting with people. Um, they do also love a strawberry and kale smoothie, which is what they are getting uh, for theirs. Yeah. No, it, it's it's brilliant. The bony hand kind of goes into a jar and stuffs some kale into the smoothie. <laughs> and hands it over to you. Um, it, it's probably a little... Um, the, the main difference between here and the Citadel is the smell. Uh, you have that wonderful smell in the tanning place specifically of of kind of burnt and stretched out flesh, uh, specifically hair, which has a very unique smell mm. to it. Um, lovely. Uh, if, you know, maybe if you can get it into a candle, that would be extra amazing. Uh, but out here, things like just smell like it's, it's fresh and it's floral and, oh God, it's, it's just like, it's human sweat and human sadness just everywhere, wiping themselves on brick walls. It's disgusting. It's nothing like the beautiful smell of burnt corpses. Yeah, yeah, I really, I, I really like it in the in the tannery, so much more than out here around nasty, disgusting living people. I know, right? Oh God, it's just gross. <laughs> All right, well, I guess it's... yeah, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my name's Colt Chambers. I'm a member of the militia, which is a guardian of a law. And I'm a, also an investigator, so it's kind of like a cross between a PI and a, a, a lawyer. Um, uh, yeah, I'm a, I was born on the streets. Uh, I, I, I hit the streets and I keep hitting until I get what I want and I'm on a case. Uh, the smoothie, it's, it's mostly pruned. It's bitter, just like life. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like the intermingling of different genres of like noir and and creepy horror and um, just some some person on the TI eighty four just just having at it, <laughs> disgusting everyone around them. Like that's <laughs> the best part is that's the most offensive thing in the room is just TI eighty four character. Oh yeah, yeah. Now. Like everyone, like they there's nothing but respect for the dear architect um, who smells like dead corpses and burnt hair. Uh, but then looking at the person with that clear case, like silver edition <laughs> TI eighty four, <laughs> probably used on some SATs and crap like that. Like oh god, look at that, look at that person. Disgusting. Yeah, I just can't can't look at them, and the the family soon departs. Uh, looking backwards, the kid looking back in wonder as well as a sort of fear towards um, uh, Geo uh, with the parents kind of pushing them down the road, ensuring that uh, hopefully they never this kid never becomes like you, and you are the last of your kind. Philistine, exactly. Uh, so in this, you can you kind of see everyone uh, getting ready for the day, people walking. Uh, not many people do it with any sort of enthusiasm. Uh, and you see a um, almost like a, a little bus pulled by uh, two oxen. The oxen, the back half of the oxen have been carved out with pipes stretching out of it to pull these large chariots um, filled with people. Uh, their eyes have been removed and replaced with red lenses. Uh, as they kind of move down with steam kind of boiling out of their nostrils uh, onto the street, a little bit of that uh, moisture dripping down too hot uh, on the stone cobbles. Um, 
people um, wearing different clothes. It's very utilitarian, uh, very different shades of gray, brown. Every now and then you'll see something that's not like a muted color and they definitely stand out like a rose and a pile of weeds. But this is uh, this is Frenze. This is this is Florence. It's been like this for a long time, and maybe one day it'll change. But but for now, this is this kind of everything it's it's meant to be. Um, we'll say that our dear uh, cult chambers, um, staring down at a a, a bunch of files and such. Uh, cause your, your job, everything falls upon you to keep everything, uh, to, to extrapolate what the, uh, the Citadel of Science deems as the law, uh, to kind of codify the, uh, scientificus, um, and then to deal out justice, um, but not too severe because life is sacred. Uh, no one mm. is murdered. Uh, the worst uh, that can happen to someone is they are sent to the vegetable fields and work for the remainder of their days until they become a construct themselves and then also work for the remainder of that those days. Um, but there have been a, uh, a string of... Um, well, it's it's kind of something that's been dumped on your desk because most of the uh, militia are focused on humanity, but someone did come up with some complaints about uh, animals that have died within the past couple of months, a string of, of killings. And it's, so it's been dumped on your desk because, you know, just things seem to be dumped on your desk uh, a, a lot. Uh, and this is kind of the the main thing with the <clears throat> militia uh, overhead of you. Uh, kind of, uh, her name is Jennifer. Just kind of every morning asking you as you come into the office, like how how is that case? Uh, and then almost joking, like um, she doesn't really care, but hey, it's you, and <laughs> you know, it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, but this has been kind of lingering on your mind. Um, as you're looking at these sketches of animals, um, some parts missing and the like, you can almost imagine the use of such a thing, but maybe you don't want to figure out what the final piece of the conclusion of this particular case is. Um, but as, as everyone kind of clears the, the roads and such, um, you do get a slight whiff of something dead. And I think um, Pod also smells it, too, just because it's like that sweet floral scent in the air. Uh, something burned, something dead, something wonderful uh, to be explored. Um, yeah, so what do you guys do? There's a smell of, of this is coming from while we're in the smoothie place? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, kind of in between... Um, peanut butter and and strawberry there's that wonderful smell of of burnt hair and and, and death uh capitan is checking his uh to see is like oh no did something short out and <laughs> yeah. burning? Like, uh, how's my lower half doing yeah i, I just run like full diagnostics <laughs> yeah yeah everything like comes up clear uh you yeah. get the thumbs up from your uh from your power armor mm-hmm <clears throat> I just, I just wonder if somebody like, like that's in my mind, that's what the just protein shake probably does to your, to your internals. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what, what happens when a little bit of the just protein uh, squirts out into your, in, yeah. in some of your electronics. And, and it's kind of like you, you wonder like, okay, they take the flesh and the bits from a construct, but what do they do with it? That's right. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah. I, I, Gia's just, just kind of tooling along messing with this thing and like, uh, uh, like not not the first time i've smelt it but never you know it's not the clean smell of burning electronics and so i'm not into it <laughs> yeah i'm pretty curious about it i i'm actively like i'm not I'm like i step into the street to like look around for it because that could be like a illegal treatment of the dead if it's not properly you know, handled exactly um so it's not very hard to to follow. Um, you kind of come out, smell the the streets, and I guess the, the one of the benefits of having the construct ox and horses and stuff like that is there's no poop anymore on the streets, hmm. uh, so you can walk in safety. 
Um, if there is poop, it's very unfortunate. Uh, it's probably someone else. Uh, but you look back in in an alleyway, very thin, like uh, so. You kind of would have to like uh, crawl through like uh, 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 your chest against the wall. Um, you see that there is a garbage bag, um, tightly wound with barbed wire, um, all the way around it. I think Capitan would have uh, would have been outside doing his diagnostics because he needs mm -hmm. room. Because God forbid the power armor take a child's head off or something. So yeah. I probably would have been out okay. there do checking me out. Saw a uh, Colt doing some sniffing, and then just kind of like observed him as they as they did their thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? uh, po Pod as well would have been searching out this this smell. Like it's it's home for pod <laughs> they 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 want to be in that comfortable spot of where, wherever that smell is so uh they would probably also be kind of investigating around we have this bag uh i'm gonna try and open it without cutting myself on the barbed wire yeah why don't you go ahead uh as we hop into the first roll of the day Ooh. um so for this we'll say steel uh, and you are the militia, so dexterity would definitely work. Uh, for this game, uh, successes come either through a suit that matches what you're trying to do. So in this case, steel is diamonds. Uh, and the uh, the product of, of two different cards, or one card equaling eight or a 16. Uh, eight being one success, 16 being two successes. Uh, so all this together allows you to accumulate uh, up to three successes in this game. If you are skilled at a thing, you play two cards. Otherwise, you only play one. Um, mm. So it's up to you. Um, this, uh, I say it's one consequence. Uh, one to avoid uh, getting like cut up, uh, if you would like. Um, but I leave it to you. Yeah, I'm just going to play uh, my two of diamonds. Excellent. So that is one success. Uh, you're able to uh, kind of finagle around the bag, uh, untie this this very serrated barbed wire, um, and within it, you see this kind of it's a weird little art piece. Uh, it looks like um, a, a kind of ground meat in the shape of. Uh, Maybe an animal of some sort. It's it's kind of a, a mix between a cat and a chicken. Uh, and it's obvious that this isn't really an animal. This is just someone had all this ground beef and just kind of clumped together like you would a hamburger and, and made it into this weird shape uh, and, and kind of threading it together. So it's like a, a cat, but with like chicken feet um, and some feathers poking out of it. Um, hanging from its uh, chin is this leather bag that's still wet uh, with this sort of red crimson goo uh, and the bag is tied up on the end almost like a sack well I'd like to investigate the bag I want to I'm going to hand the chicken contract to pod to see if he knows you know you, you know meat <laughs> what can you deduce yeah. from this <laughs> well yeah well, I can uh I can I can definitely take a look at it and try and uh, figure out what um Yep, I'll take a look. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right. Uh, who wants to go first? Now, question. We've drawn uh, how many cards? For six the day? cards, yeah. So at the beginning of the day, you take your first breath and you draw up to six cards. Okay. And we're allowed to see what they are? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are that's your hand. It's almost like spoons, as you know, like what you can accomplish uh, mm. somewhat throughout the day. Um, and so it's kind of almost a give and take on like what cards do you want to keep and what cards do you want to use gotcha. Uh, gotcha. for gotcha. certain things. Well, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I, go for it. I was going to say I would, I would love to take a look and see what I could discern from this. Excellent. Um, all right. Anything specific? Uh, uh, I mean, I guess I want to see like if I can figure out kind of the the method of removal uh and like what 
if I can figure out what was done after these parts were removed. Yeah. Um, so you're you're very well equipped with with medicine and such, and this is definitely. Um, are you tasting it? That's a that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Y- yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Good answer. <laughs> it's, it's tastes perfect. like chicken and cat. Yeah, it's and it's like, how do you know that, or why would you know that? But it's, it's best not to to settle on that question as you're like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, but there's also whatever the, whatever the meat equivalent of a sommelier is. What right. is <laughs> Ooh, this tastes like an old world tabby. Yeah, exactly. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um. And, and yeah, it, it's actually like it, it's not just like cat and, and chicken. There's definitely like all sorts of like animal byproducts uh, stuffed in this thing. It's mm-hmm. it is truly this uh, uh, homunculus of of different tastes and flavors. Um, and I say flavor because it has been seasoned. Uh, the more you kind of look and and and, and feel and and kind of lick with your your tongue, uh, yeah. There's like um. Oh man, that's a hint of nutmeg and uh, ooh, it's a little bit of honey. I wonder where they got that from. Uh, some salt, pepper, uh, definitely some local herbs, um, parsley, paprika, paprika. I'm getting some rubbed sage in this as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it, uh, Cap would walk in and say, "It's just a dead animal. Just turn it in for protein reprocessing." <laughs> It's well, what it's, it is, right? It's just a dead. Uh, what is it? A dead it's a, animal? It's a, it's, it's a whole lot more than that. It's kind of like a. Um, uh, do you know how like sausage is made? Um, it's it's like a, a variety of different bits of animals, and it was uh, very clearly made for that. It's it's been it's been seasoned. It's been flavored. So like there was in, intention, I think, to eat it, but um, it's. I mean, it's delicious. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I would highly recommend. Trying no, don't. Uh, I take that back. I'm just walk, walking that back. But um, it's uh, it's 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 something is what it is. I look at the cup. I'm like, isn't that illegal? Yeah, oh. like, yeah. You're no. not. Isn't aren't we not supposed to? Isn't this all supposed to be like strictly monitored and measured? How is there just random meat lying around? It's like three violations the right there. Yeah, yeah. this feels. <laughs> And and none of them health codes. It's pretty much just all dead things belong to the citadel. Yeah. And obviously this is dead. That's interesting. Are there any identifying yeah. markings on the bag or on the uh, on the barbed wire? Maybe it doesn't look like a, it's been like why would it? Why would this be protected with barbed wire? Yeah, it's wrapped in barbed wire like my heart. I don't I don't know who would do that. <laughs> the weirdest a bunch of mixed messages. We'll unpack that later, but um, what um, is there a trail? Like, do you see? Like, was it dragged in here? Is that something that oh, we yeah. can observe? Yeah. Uh, whoever wants to kind of lead on this endeavor, you can make a perception check, uh, which is based on steam, uh, which is clubs. I have a fair amount of clubs. If people are short on clubs, I'm fine spending a club. I also think oh, you're yeah. like that's your thing, right? Like yeah, yeah, you're yeah. The investigator. Okay. Yeah, actually, yeah. for the investigator, you have a uh, a special uh, trace search. Skill. Yeah, trace search. So you can. This is a gear or a spades for this endeavor, but pretty much okay. uh, you get to play two cards, and every success you get to ask me a question concerning like uh, this yeah. place, and I, I answer it truthfully. Okay. Or will sure. I? Yeah. But burn two spades. If you want. Or, or two spades. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah do I have to, can I choose to burn one, get an answer, and then see if I have a follow-up question to burn another? Or is it two at the top? <laughs> two at the top. Is it, is it, cause, cause the, because the statement is like, because you, you could theoretically get three here because you could mm-hmm. match suits and get over eight. So you could theoretically get three successes or questions. I see. Well, I have a two of spades and a queen of spades. So my total is only going to be four but I will burn both of them. All right. Okay, cool. So two successes. What are your questions for me? Yeah. Um, where, uh, 
do I know of any uh like vigilantes or like groups that would that would maybe be trying to make a statement with this? Like is there like a like oh yeah, just been a rash, like there's missing animals, like I'm looking for missing animals, like like how does this mesh with my current investigation clues that I might have? Yeah, so the investigation that uh, you have led are, are missed animals and animals with chunks of them missing, um, stolen. Um, so this very well be like the byproduct of your investigation. It's almost like the um, uh, kind of reading old stories and such, the evolution of what could pen potentially could be a serial killer, which is... Something that's kind of unheard of in this time, even the most uh, monstrous of people at least understand that humanity can't really uh, keep going on if, if people are just dying for, for someone's pleasure. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, second question would be a uh, more observational one <laughs> is, are there any other details I can detect about uh how this bag came to be here like a trail of you know dripping meat that i can just follow like or you know uh, that kind of thing like there's a they dropped their work badge yeah so um on the sack hanging from this uh this creature there are these strange like uh occult like symbols um almost reminiscent of like the the cave paintings of of a long mm -hmm. long time ago um of, of like various designs it's almost like humanity and all these different creatures dancing upon uh this this still um line of blood uh and then underneath it there's a reflection of them but more um hmm. greater there's almost a semblance of, of godhood uh, achieved on the other side um other than that uh the barbed wire is definitely from the uh the junk pile uh, uh, there is rust uh, on the edges of it. Um, it's not very well maintained. Something if the Citadel uses barbed wire, it's very well. Uh, it looks great. It's sharp, and this one is is amateurish, uh, taken and, and piecemeal together around this thing. Um, and yeah, and the parsley definitely from the farm. Farm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll. I mean, I'll relay all this information to everybody. Like, it's a it's a mishmash of things from all over the city. We got barbed wire from the junkyard, parsley from the farm, occult symbols maybe indicate some sort of, you know, religious influence, but you know, not any church sanctioned by the uh, the science commission, whatever they're called, <laughs> the Codex Scientificus. Where's that nerd that likes old things? Yeah, <laughs> get Maybe the nerd. Like, we Maybe flash. We the... flash back inside, and Geo's like putting putting the screws back on the back of the TI eighty four, and <laughs> you know, finishing up the last little bit of like uh, awfully of, good uh, peanut butter banana <laughs> smoothie with extra offal. Um, you know, getting that last little bit out, uh, and and getting ready to walk out around the building around this time. Let's head it out to the junk piles for the day. Uh, you're going to the junk piles. Oh, that that's like I'm walking that way. Like you, like uh, I y'all y'all as you like say this, you look up and he's like we flash back inside. We see all that happen and like y'all see him walking past the edge of the alleyway. Right as you say, where where's that nerd? <laughs> where's the nerd? <laughs> where's the nerd? <laughs> and so, what y'all did y'all need something? We yeah, it's like uh, he's like, uh, sir. Uh, you seem to have a penchant for for something. Can we ask you a question? Um, very like straight back military bearing, you know, just a commanding, just larger than he is physically presence, mm -hmm. and then just like uh, these symbols. Have you seen these around somewhere? Especially with the older mm -hmm. antiquity. The, the old. <laughs> Older antiquity, um, uh, yeah, not the older antiquity, <laughs> just you know, antiquity. antiquity in general. Antiquity, it's a double, yeah, never mind. The uh, <laughs> listen here, nerd, yeah, <laughs> shut up, I have power, <laughs> armor. <Nerd. laughs> 
no. Like if, you, if you're gonna call I'm me not a nerd, unkind. I'll be, I'll be a actually... nerd. Um, so I, 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 yeah, I don't. Have I seen anything like this out around the junk piles? Have I seen like weird symbols marked up? Anything else like that recently? Yeah. So looking back, um, there have been um, these kind of old uh, archaic symbols that have been. Uh, making the rounds around the junk pile. And it's usually hard to tell what's junk and what's new. Um, but these kind of stand out in your mind as you're looking uh, past them and seeing these uh, almost hieroglyphics uh, painted onto this sack of meat, um, this little leather sack ball thing. Because I imagine it's like I'm out in the junk piles. There's automatons dropping stuff out in the junk piles, but I probably don't see a lot of other people out. Yeah, just your pile. just just other nerds. Like yeah. you would see another nerd playing with a calculator and just like, oh, like, hey, this hey. is my area, nerd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is my nerd collector zone. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen a bunch of different symbols like that out there. I guess you know for the last little bit, um, you know, there's there's always weird stuff dropping out. It's hard to know whether the symbols were on them before they got there or after they showed up. Well, if we're going to head out to that junk pile, you need protection. I'll accompany. Th thanks? Like, I was going to the junk pile either way. <laughs> um, what are, what are y'all going to do with, with that? I look to Colt. Why, why are you, why, have you been eating that? Nope, nope, definitely. I was I was just trying to identify what it was. Uh, definitely didn't actually eat any of it. Maybe did some some tasting of it but didn't didn't eat any of it i would be happy to hold on to it though if uh, if we needed someone to hold on to it i would i would uh, that would be cool yeah you, you can hold on to the to the construct i'm going to hold on to the sack okay <laughs> great so we're all are coming with me to the junk file is sure. that what we're uh, yep okay all right sure let's all right. <laughs> so we'll head out to the junk pile. Um, you know, I, I'm sure I have my normal way of like weaving through the city to get to whatever zone I, I normally collect in. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, my normal way of weaving through the pile to get there. So uh, maybe we'll stop. Like, I'll, I'll think about where I have seen some of these symbols before and we can go check out some of those spots yeah. also. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty much to the just outside the gates to the west of the city. Uh, it, it's pretty much every place that um, Florence has dumped all the stuff it no longer needs as it clears out um, Florence with all this old stuff that humanity no longer needs. Uh, so you go out of this gate and you're just kind of uh, you see these large mountains and piles of stuff, computers, old bicycles, um, a blender, um, a Nintendo 64, uh, a PS5 as well. Well, the Cyberpunk 20 whatever <laughs> version version of the PS5 <laughs> on the corner there. I'll point at the uh, blender. People used to make smoothies in those things isn't that crazy barbaric yeah like it's much so, better in a construct so much better in a construct i really don't understand why anyone would use anything else <laughs> contracts just make everything smell and taste so much better yeah and it's it's like if you ever saw labyrinth it's that you know that pile of of junk uh this maze like thing uh that has slowly been cleared out by the the technosophists uh giving pathways and such uh, but it's just stuff and stuff like rising several meters into the sky. Yeah. I dig it. Literally. I start, I go like, I'll show them some, like I'll, I'll point out some of the different symbols that I've seen uh, as we head out this way. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to dig around in my normal spot. Like I, that's what I was, I was, I was coming out here anyways. I found that, that, uh, that old um, iMac. And so I'm, I'm looking for a few more of those, you know? Yeah, it's a it, this this place is filled with wires and like old microphones, computers and monitors, uh, as well as some like weirdly uh, shaped beauty products, um, cars as well, uh, with part of them kind of just 
ripped apart, uh, maybe crushed in the early days. Um, looking at some of the markings that you guys recognize on the sack, uh, they're kind of hidden in little detailish sort of way. So under the hood of a car, um, or just kind of on the power button for an old console. Um, and they're like scribbled on. Yeah, kind of painted on. Painted. Uh, yeah, uh, with this like dark uh, crimson fluid. It's not blood, but it's something else. Um, <clears throat> trying to think if it, can I like, can I make any rhyme or reason out of where these are positioned in the junkyard based on my my experiences out here? Yes. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, so this would definitely be your mental capacity. So steam. Um, you do have perception, so uh, you're trained in it. So. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll say uh, for this because it's it's kind of very hard. Uh, we'll give it two successes required to start piecing this mm -hmm. thing together. All right, so uh, so that means I can put in two cards, mm -hmm. uh, and Steam is clubs. Correct. Yeah. And then um, uh, if I get an eight, it's a success also. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to put in uh, a two of clubs and a seven of spades. So there'll be one success for the club. Then I've got a nine total. So that'll be. Yep. Two, two successes. successes total. Perfect. Uh, looking around it, it's very, um, uh, as everything starts to, to put in uh, pieces and such, uh, it's almost like a reflection of um, what the, uh, the sack is, is trying to tell you, uh, like above and under, uh, what is below, what is above, uh, kind of reflection. As above, so below. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was trying to get to. Um, it, it feels like the more you look into it and the, the deeper you kind of look at these markings, one of these is a trap and the other is to something glorious. Mm -hmm. Like one of the markings represents something as a trap and one of the markings represents something glorious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much on the kind of comparing the sack with the things that you're, you're going around. There's images on the top part of the sack and there's images on the bottom part of the sack. Okay. One of these signifies one of those. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> We're going to avoid those trap ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these are the bad symbols. <laughs> I um, hear... I hear trap and immediately like you, you hear my armor go <laughs> like, because apparently one of my skills is readiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I am suddenly like, wait, there's a possibility of violence here. There's Nuke it from over it. There's tra yes. <laughs> and there's, there's like a, and I'm just like, at the ready is that something i have to draw or is that just a skill i have that's just like if if i'm ever trying to ambush you uh or, or something like that it's uh you would you would draw to not be uh fucked over oh crap that was our one that was our one that, that was, was our, our one, one. Oh. Oh. Oh, it wasn't worth it it's all full of frigs and freakins <laughs> now so. yeah yeah you gotta be careful or you're gonna be fudged over that's yeah. right um, um but yeah no so i'm at the ready and i'm suddenly kind of like scanning for like i'm just suddenly doing my perimeter like you know defensive stuff as as uh the rest of the group is mm -hmm. uh doing some discovery but i'm i'm like a sentry at this point um i'm going to i'm going to because there's kind of this sense of we're exploring the area a little bit can i can i use my like you know every once in a while out here the different the different junk rats uh, that come out here we'll we'll kind of like message back and forth or we'll we'll pick up weird signals. I'm gonna take out my radio scanner uh, mm -hmm. and just kind of scan through frequencies and see if I'm picking up anything interesting yeah. in the area. I mean the the first one is, is something that you uh, are familiar with. It's a podcast on uh, junk piling and yeah. uh, the things you can find. Yeah, so, uh, the, those guys on the junk pod, so like they're they're kind of know, so right? Close, you know, like it's hard because <laughs> by the time they've announced something, like everybody just swarms that spot, so it's almost not worth it. But you know, like <laughs> I'm gonna step away for one second. Continue. Yeah, no problem. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we should just name it like uh, <laughs> trash talk. Like, 
trash or or, or, or junkie plus one uh plus the, one. The, the podcast <laughs> <laughs> just and here we are again with a possible uh t85 um <laughs> lovely i think it's got mafia still installed in it so that's that's lovely <laughs> Uh, you remember that, that antiques was... roadshow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but but kind of going on, there's also um, a a particular kind of screeching. A uh, it almost sounds like uh, nails against a chalkboard um, on one of those signals, and it kind of it penetrates your ear, and and almost uh, it's almost like little little fingernails upon your your skull. Um, but it's close. Something is is shooting out that like little exactly. If you have someone else in your house, they should do that. But if if they're around, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's close though. Um, cool. Uh, I'm gonna turn that up so everybody can hear it. Uh, and be <laughs> yeah. like, uh, this uh, this this horrible noise. This isn't normal. Um. Normally, it's just you know, it's just junk uh, junkies plus one talking trash out here in the, uh-huh. in the files. Uh, you know, uh, Randall's always on that that hunt for the next you know TI eighty five. or or you know, uh, Lisa twelve uh, MacBook. Um, so I, uh, it, but I, I've never heard this before out here. And so and it, and it sounds like it's close, whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Can you trace it? I, I probably can. That probably is going to require me to spin cards, though. Um, yeah, I, I try to hone in on the the frequency of this thing. Excellent. Uh, so I will say for one success, you can hone in. For two successes, I'll give you a little something extra. Would this be gears because it's yes. using technology? Excellent. Yeah. Then, then I can do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and use a two of spades and a three of spades. Uh, awesome. But I'm getting yeah. mentally exhausted. At <laughs> yeah, this point. you're like, oh god. <laughs> uh, so you're you're kind of can can figure out. There's a stronger signal, uh, different locations and stuff. It takes some time because some of the this location isn't cut out, so you kind of have to go over some of the piles, and and so you're kind of surrounded by Care Bears and discarded beanie babies uh, of yesteryear teddy rock spins uh, the, the the stretchy uh god we're those the stretchy stretch joke. Armstrong. yeah stretch armstrong <laughs> um and then you get an idea and you slow down this this muse this this sound uh and the the slower you go the more you realize it's tiny tim tiptoeing <laughs> through the tulips <laughs> Wow. Get that full wasteland effect going. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, that's weird. Um, there are no tulips out here. <laughs> there are no tulips What's to be tulip? had. Yeah. The fuck is oh no! What the fuck is this tulip? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't worry about it too much. Like I said, it's a, it's it's a rule that oftentimes gets broken. So uh, it's it's just a fun goal that we have, but you know it's not a big. I'm deal. trying to hit that goal, but I so... keep hitting it in the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> the um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess so. We slow it down, get a little bit of sense of of where it's coming from. Uh, does it take us anywhere, or is it just? Uh, where where do we find ourselves as we as we get closer to the signal? Yeah, and it, it's definitely more difficult for uh, el, el Capitan, uh, mm. whose power armor just crushes everything uh, underneath. So getting up these piles uh, is, is definitely more difficult uh, for for our dear Captain. Like he's trying to lead the charge, and we're like, no, you slid down <laughs> into each of us like <laughs> twice already. We're gonna so, you, you bring up the rear. Um. Are these piles stable, or are they just kind of like? It it, it shifts and, and depends on okay on your okay and such. okay. All right, I uh, contemplate using a power assisted thrust, but then I s- don't do it because <laughs> <laughs> like I have I have essentially like a super jump that I just land like and land on top of the mountain thing, but maybe not, maybe not. I don't want to destroy anything. 
Uh, all right. What's everyone else doing as you guys are making your way through these uh, these piles? Like this just this, this this feels really like bad bad to everyone else, right? Like this is not this is probably like pretty bad. Does anyone else really like? I'm I'm I I don't think I don't like this at all. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has any specific thoughts about how they feel. I feel very uncomfortable right now. I don't like being outside the walls. I don't like that music. It's very uncomfortable. It's a weird voice. It's very warbly. Is it? Um, it's so we're we're tracking. We're we're trying to like z triangulate where that music is coming from, right? Yeah, you're you're pretty much watching Geo like go to various like symbols hidden and and kind of like figuring it, out where. Right. If I were to use my, like I guess, my power not the combat but my armor to kind of like um shore up some of this stuff like to literally like power lift a, like the car out of the way so mm -hmm. that we have a straighter path or or that we like it's we're not like walled in by stuff could i try to like just lift a heavy object out of the way to make the path more oh, yeah more you, wanna, you just want to clear the path yeah yeah but uh yeah but re really uh, showing off my armor. <laughs> All right. So for one success, you can very much do that. For two successes, you will be showing off. What would I be using? This is this steel. is steel. Steel. This yeah, is yeah, which is diamonds. Diamonds. So I'm gonna use uh, four of diamonds. So that's one success. Mm -hmm. But I'm also gonna use a four of clubs for two. Excellent. Yeah. So what does this look like as you heroically So I imagine I'm I'm like I have like a contraption that's like a spider on my back, right? That's like empowering all my limbs and has like pistons and things. Mm -hmm. And I imagine it 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 starts to like there's like a power unit on my back and chest that starts to glow a little bit. And then I and then I go to use two hands. But you know what? I only need the one and I just lift one of these flattened cars. And just kind of, it takes more strength to be gentle. So I'm genuinely just going to slowly and softly put it away uh, up to the side, I, almost like almost like it's a feather. And just like chick click, pink. I'm like, all right, if we have to run, we can. If uh, not, this just gives us an easier an easier path of egress. Yeah. You guys can see two Technofonts, a uh, a man and a woman, uh, not too far off, swooning in response to uh, Capitan's show of strength. And then I uh, provide us a path, like it's a clear line closer to the stuff and away from the the sound, you know, like that kind of thing. Perfect. Uh, and how about our dear militia? Uh. I'm just kind of keeping an eye out, trying to. I'm just like a, trying to absorb all the information, notice anything possibly interesting. But I haven't, don't have anything to actually do in this moment. I'm ready to react as soon as something happens. Yeah. Well, fortunately, uh, the movement of the vehicles uh, shows that there is a um, uh, a port portcullis just kind of leading down underneath this junk pile, uh, earth kind of over parts of it. Uh, so you kind of have to move some of the dirt, but uh, just like this old, um, this this hole in, in, in grate over it that, that shows something underneath, uh, a little bit of water, the goo and such dripping from the junk piles into what might be a maze of some sort. Can you, can you keep that open, Capitan? Um, yeah, well, let me, let's check to make sure that uh, it, it's safe for, and I look True. over Trap. at Pod, looking, looking very nervous. Uh, I may, this is, uh, I'm sure purely an exercise. I'm sure we're all fine. Uh, nothing to worry about here. And uh, nerd, I don't, what was your character? Geo. Geo. <laughs> nerd. nerd. You just call nerd. me nerd the entire time. It's fine. <laughs> Listen, I mean, Geo, uh, I'm sure there's some cool stuff down there for you as well. Let's take a look. And then I'm just going uh, to right, try and... Uh, so uh, you feel free to do whatever you want to do. Um, I will remind you that there were uh, both the 
transcendent symbols of something good as well as the horrible symbols of a trap. But you go ahead and open that. Do whatever you want to do. It's great. Is there a trap yeah. symbol on this one? Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember earlier when I pointed at the symbols and said, these are the good ones and these are the yeah, bad yeah. ones. Well, are there any here in the portcullis? Um, so looking at it, this kind of split down the middle with this this kind of old remnants of a, a paint uh, a long, long time ago. So it's kind of hard to see. Uh, and so it resembles the figures and the line in between of the sack that uh, our, our dear militia is carrying. Um, left, under, right, over. Hmm. Left, under, right, over. One of them will always tell a lie, and the other one will always yeah. tell the truth. <laughs> exactly. Correct me if I'm wrong, Colt. Was the transcend the, the transcendent part below? Like it was very simple. It was very simple on the top, and then godlike in the bottom. That's, yeah, that's, those you're, are the words correct. you used. Good memory. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, I probably want to go left. I guess. I guess we go below. And I just grabbed the game. <laughs> <laughs> or if it just opens. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you grab it and you're, you're able to yeah. yank it uh, up and, and over uh, the kind of the great uh, clanking on the side. Mm -hmm. You see a staircase aligned in the cement uh, going further and further down. Who would like to go first? I think we have the uh, guy in the power armor. I would imagine it's me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I activate uh, my shoulder lights on yeah. my, um, or like a chest beacon. Oh, I actually have a thing that, that has light on the front. My front plates mm -hmm. are raised to reveal a battery of vials containing thermal reactive photogenic solution. One of them will say is just a light. And then I, yeah. and uh, I kind of, it like emits a glow from my joints so that I kind of am creating light everywhere. Excellent. Um, actually, before we go down in there, how long have we been out? How long has this taken us at this point in time? Uh, about, so you guys have been traveling through the junk pile for about an hour. About an hour, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is a, a, a good question. Since you guys are have kind of been uh, being mentally taxed and such, you could take uh a what would amount to as a, a break to kind of get your breath before going down into um or you could just put the gate over and let the techno font deal with whatever and yeah you know. yeah i mean as somebody who spends a lot of time you got to pace yourself when you're out when you're out here in the in the piles you know what i'm saying like you can't just keep on going you start making mistakes uh and so i i i'm all for taking a short break uh yeah you know I got a little bit of offal left that I put in a little pouch that I'm going to still got some of that peanut butter flavor on it. Uh, just pop a few of those in my mouth and, and encourage people to, to, to take a short break before we go down, uh, which mechanically, right? Like this lets us redraw up to our hand. Yeah. So you, you discard one card in your hand and okay. then you draw back up to six. So you'll be able to keep some of your cards depending on how many you've used uh, in the, in the past. Right. Um, and an ace is just a one in this game, right? Like an ace is correct. Is the ace is the least valuable of all cards, mm -hmm. uh, theoretically. Um, cool. And, and we don't have to discard if we don't want to. You have to discard at least one card that was in your hand. Okay. If you, what if you don't have any cards in your hand at that point in time? Uh, if you have no cards in your hand, you're just drawing up to six. Okay. Cool. But otherwise, you've got to make a, a make a choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very unfortunate having no cards in your hands because that means every time an action occurs, you have to blind pick from the top of your deck and then just get whatever you have there. So oh, especially it's... in combat, yeah. it's it's very, uh, very difficult. That's very cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's very, such a good mechanic because you've. it's like when you get tired, you make poor decisions. You don't know. You know what I mean? You can't plan for the outcome. Yeah. That's like going down into the sewers, like. What? Uh oh! <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> and we just keep our discard separate until we get to the end of the pile. Correct. correct yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, so while everyone is hanging out oh. by the panel, uh, the thing, I, 
I pop a goo in my, you know, like the marathon runners. It's just yeah, pure, yeah. It's just pure glucose. For function over uh, over anything, just utilitarian nutrients. But I, I like I like the idea that it is phosphorescent. Like it's is, it is literally mildly glowing. I feel yeah, like yeah. it has like a pinup construct on the side, just like you know. <laughs> <laughs> A robot with unnecessary boobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like they're like, but why though? Why? <laughs> <laughs> For advertisement. That's why. <laughs> oh man. Um. So yeah. Uh. I I went ahead and discarded one and drew up. Same as did I. I had a cigarette. You had a cigarette. Yeah. So <laughs> as you guys are are taking your break, like right right at the end of it, uh, you. You especially, Geo, notice uh, that the two technosophists who were, you know, swooning over the captain, captain are, are pretty much like by you guys now. They, they've mm. turned the corner uh, and they are in your general vicinity. One of them is a dark skinned man with long red braided hair. Uh, wearing large gloves and a gas mask. The other is a woman with blonde hair, pigtails, um, kind of like this uh, very horribly put together uh, eyeshadow and makeup um, and, and wearing what looks like kind of old military garb, uh, camouflage with a, a vest um, as they kind of gaze at you inquisitively. Um, do they are they wearing any of uh, the tech junkie plus one tech talk swag? Do I do, have, I, mm. have I seen these guys at a meetup before? Oh, uh, so junkie plus one is trying to get swag. It's just kind of a whole process that that whole thing. Um, but uh, so these people definitely don't have any representation that they're associated with with junkie plus one. Um, but they definitely are technosophists. You've probably seen them every now and then, Chio. They're kind of like a duo, okay. uh, watching each other's back and such. But they they definitely um, strike gold more than some of the others. One of them even has a drone, though you don't see that drone right now. Cool. Um, I kind of like head nod at them. Uh, what are you up to? Any, any find anything good in the, in the in the stacks today? Yeah, uh, the one with the uh, long braided uh, red hair approaches. I mean, it looks like there's power armor in the stacks. I mean, there is power armor in the stacks, but it belongs to someone. Yeah, it's just, you know, I don't I don't know what you're thinking, Geo, but you brought these people into the stacks like you know, they look down on us and you coming in here and what are you guys going to come out with something beautiful, something nice, something nice and shiny? Are you going to have it or are they going to have it? I mean, they why would they want it? Like that's not their thing. Why are they here, Geo? I mean, like so you're you're saying that they look down on us, but trying to get them to understand that there's value out here is a bad thing? Like, nah, I just want them the fudge out of our stacks. Uh, well, I mean, they're gonna do what they're gonna do, and then they'll get out of the stacks. They want to go to the farm later today. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't care about the farm. We just care about the stacks. All right. Well, like the more time you waste bothering them, the longer they're gonna end up being in the stacks. Geo, it sounds like you don't like us. I mean, you're the one who came in here and started accusing me of stuff. I don't think that's how it went down. I think we said hello, and then you got uppity. Like, that's... No, I asked if you guys had found anything good in the stacks, and then you started talking about <laughs> killing people. Like, that's... <laughs> and taking whoa, whoa, stuff. whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not talking no. about killing anyone, okay? Yeah, don't, no one said anything about killing people, right? I Because I, that... I wouldn't like that. Let's not do that. Well, I, I mean, his power armor is a is a fairly incorporated part of his essential being. So I don't, I don't know exactly how oh, you were well, planning on getting it without. We got a Phillips head, some duct tape. We'll figure it out. Right. I'm not. I'm not listening. I'm here. I'm eating my goo off to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Pretending I don't hear this. 
but I'm I'm re- I have readiness. So for for sure yeah. I'm here. I'm just like <laughs> these guys have no idea. I I have a forty uh, like a giant blade that could come out of my arm at any moment. Yeah, yeah. try me to try me with your <laughs> Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> Duct tape. Get the get the fudge out of here. That would have been appropriate use of of the. <laughs> That would have been a good one. So, uh, I mean, like, I, I mean, if you want to try to trade him for his power armor, you are welcome. Otherwise, it sounded like you were talking about physically removing it from him without his permission. And I mean, I don't know how you operate out here in the stacks, but last time I checked, like, that wasn't how we treated each other. And we don't often bring these people out here. So, you know what, Geo, you're right. We've been unkind, and we owe you an apology. You asked us a legit question. We're doing quite well. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. I dude, I, I found it. I'm just going to geek out for like way longer than this guy is probably actually interested in <laughs> about about the computer I found the day before uh, and about some of the the weird code I found in it that I think might actually be like somebody was doing a, a programming on an original game. And if we can reclaim it, we could actually have the first new release in like decades yeah. on the planet. Well, they they are they are they are there to match you and over. So you guys <laughs> you guys will see the technosophists like group up together and like showing off the TI eighty four. All, all, all aggression is gone for a second as we yeah, disappear it's into like, oh, look at that. Like, overlapping oh. nerddom. And yeah, so... one of them pulls out like a Game Boy uh, with like Pokemon Gold Game Boy Special Edition, and like it's it has like a little Mega Man cartridge in it, and they're like, Check it. it's out. Another person's talking about is it called is it MySpace? Me space? Yeah, yeah. me space. There's this guy M-Y? named Tom. Tom. Yeah, Tom, Tom is still. friends with everybody. Yeah. Tom wants to be our friend. And I don't know where this Tom is. Yeah. What uh you mentioned I just made a connection. You mentioned the people taking the people out of scooping earlier mm-hmm. about people scooping uh power armor wearers. Yeah. Essentially military personnel out of their armor. Is that like a trauma? Is that like a like a genuine fear of mine? Is that something that's happening? Is that possible? Oh yeah, yeah. Like it, it, <laughs> if you were if you were outside in the wilderness and you saw cannibals, like your first fear would be like if they ever capture me, and and you're like this turtle in this wonderfully right. made armor. But if they can get the helmet off and then they move from the top to the bottom. Uh, just right. scooping you out with a spoon. Um, yeah, you, you've you've seen various like pieces of people brought back, uh, and the stories have just kind of grown from there. It's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's horrific. Have you ever eaten a crawfish? It's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna rip. They're gonna rip me in half and suck on one half and mm-hmm. up the other. Yeah. Reverse. Um, I uh, uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna walk up and been like pulling people out of their suits of armor i heard and then like uh the blade starts to slowly peek out wolverine style yeah it's like really really you're gonna become are you are you one of these cannibals we hear so much about really uh no nah, i'm a vegetarian okay whoa whoa hey geo your man's coming across very strong all right we were just joking we were we were playing you know we're we're letting you in the stacks we're being very nice would you like a teacup <laughs> <laughs> like pulls out like a little teacup from the bag like uh hey we can all appreciate humor right we can all appreciate jokes yeah what do you know about these uh these symbols we're seeing over here uh i know we don't we don't pop into that stuff what happens when a trap goes off well, um, one of the one of our, our brethren got um, I don't know would it be flayed? What what's what's the term when so much electricity goes through your body, the skin kind of peels back like a banana? Hmm. Is it cooked? blooming? Yeah, maybe cooked, but it's just kind of it blooms, right? This the person blooms. Um, so someone did uh, encounter a path, and these wires just kind of came down, and they they bloomed. Um, it was what beautiful a, for like one second, and then after yeah. that, it was horrific. What a lovely way to describe such a horrible act. Um, 
Yeah. We're well, you stay safe out here. You wouldn't want to get in any trouble with your uh, screwdrivers. And I'm the blade is still kind of out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you stay safe and um, watch out for traps. Take a little goo yeah. out of your teeth with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a giant blade kind of. Yeah, they uh, uh, the the Lord of the Red. Uh, well, actually, the 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 lady looks at you and you're like, yeah, show her. I'm a grower. <laughs> yeah. The uh, <laughs> we uh, uh, yeah. I, um, that was fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> that got me. That got me. That um, <laughs> so we'll we'll try to we'll get we'll get uh we'll get Capitan uh calmed down a little bit uh you know secured away um well uh I mean if you if y'all don't want to mess with that kind of stuff it, it looks like there's a lot of that kind of stuff down here so I mean like uh you're welcome to hang out but I mean like that's that's where they want to go look. We'll watch your you top side, okay? We'll keep this place clear and safe for you. You know what I'm saying, Geo? The only thing we ask in return, um, El Capitan owes us a date, preferably in the city, with something nice, like nice food, like a smoothie. No, not not a smoothie. Maybe something more visceral. Um, Protein brick. That'll work. Wine and dine us, Captain. I think that's fair. Uh, I, I look at I look at the captain because that's his call. Um, yeah, keep an eye out on here. Is there a deception mechanic? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There, there is. Geo is really not about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the captain doesn't understand. It's like. Yeah, a date October seventh or whatever. Who cares? Yeah, the you know like he just doesn't understand the reference because it's just not in his makeup to yeah have that that kind of relationship. So he's just like, uh, we'll put it on the schedule. We'll put ca- a calendar of some. Yeah, kind. they they yeah, pull out like a safe. a cat calendar and, and kind of flip through like the days are irrelevant. They just kind <laughs> of like pencil you pencil you and be like, all right, we got you. Good luck. I issue them a contact card, all, all, like it's like my straight up like military business card. <laughs> like here Things. you go, yeah. You bump it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they put it in their roller deck. Just like, yeah. Um, all right. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Give us a sign if uh, anything happens up here. Yeah, it'll be hauler. screaming. Yeah. Fingers crossed. It's not, huh? Get remember humor. Remember. We joked earlier. We joked, yeah, but we're not and joking then, now. Yeah, so it's like, okay, we get it. The f- filleting, blooming people. So good luck. Bye. So, so are we uh, going down? At, at Colt, I would like to co- point to Colt to just be like, so really keep an eye out for those wires that could explode us from the inside out. <laughs> blooming. Yeah. Blooming. Oh, keep you grounded. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, with that, uh, let's take our halfway point break before sure. we get into the catacombs. Uh, sure, we are playing yeah. uh, right now. We are playing Necrobiotic. It's coming up on Kickstarter soon. If you haven't checked it out yet, uh, you can type an exclamation point KS in the chat, and uh, it'll take you right to the follow page uh, for that Kickstarter. Or the the page uh, is right below us uh, also, too. That ttrpg.link slash necrobioticks will take you right there uh, as well. Um, but we're going to be back in just, we're just gonna take a five-minute break if you have not taken a break recently. If you're, if you're sitting down, if you're working, listening to this in the background, watching this later, and you need a break, you should take a five-minute break also. Uh, get some water. Go to the restroom. Get up, stretch, move around a little bit, take care of yourself uh you get stuck inside all day long uh and then you get up at the end of the day and it hurts so just yeah. be good to yourself um or and tell be, someone you love them yeah tell yeah. somebody you love them uh <laughs> you know contact a loved one um if you don't have somebody to contact just drop me a line i'll tell you i love you too it's all right 
Um, and so, uh, but yeah, we'll we're, be back. We're all about love in this bleak cyber <laughs> zombie utopia. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's, all, that's all it's supposed to be about. It's really a game about romance and love. And, and also, like, I want to go ahead and say, I want to know what kind of smoothie you would have ordered uh, also earlier, too. Like, go ahead and drop that in the chat if you're watching now or later also, too. Uh, but we're going to be back in five minutes to play some more Necrobiotic uh, here on Plus One uh, EXP in just about five minutes. And we will be right back. That link doesn't work, but it will in a second. Uh, hold on just one second. Uh, thank you, Keegan, for letting. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, but I'll, I'll get that. I'll get that relinked while we're gone, and uh, be right back. Hey, this is Tony popping in real quick to let Keegan and anybody else who is listening to the sound of my voice right now know that that link should be working properly now. I just relinked it. It may take a second or two because of cookies or whatever, um, but it should it should work right now. If not, it'll be certainly be working by the time we get back.
Yeah. So 2100, the world relies upon the dead uh, to get through the day in this bleak, macabre setting. Uh, but we also have fun. I think we're having fun. So uh, that's kind of the the elevator pitch for it. Uh, if you like a lot of Tim Burton or Repo the Genetic Opera type uh, stuff, this is definitely <laughs> in that wheelhouse. Uh, in our group of, um, I don't know what to call you guys, um, excited, enthusiastic adventurers. Intrepid. Uh, intrepid, yeah. <laughs> uh, going down into the sewers. Yeah, they're they're alive. They have meat. They have meat on them. Hot meat. What? I was muted. Um, yeah, go oh. back to the first ten minutes uh, if you haven't watched, and uh, watch watch the first ten minutes if you haven't, because we got smoothies from a very interesting smoothie dispenser. Um, I took a week off of streaming, and I came back, and I feel like I just don't know what I'm doing anymore. Um, <laughs> so, lesson to me: never take a break. Um, and so. <laughs> Uh, uh, also, in case anybody was wondering, uh, the cookies are at my house. Uh, if you're fully vaccinated mm -hmm. and in Philadelphia, swing on by. We'll eat them on the porch. Um, and oh. so, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, we're gonna hop back into it. I uh, I'll be there in two hours. There you go. <laughs> it's plenty of time for me to make cookies. Mm. And now we're about to get bloomed. Exactly. Blooming is going to happen as uh, the power armor uh, captain goes down into uh, the sewers. And this place opens up uh, like a great rift. You see tunnels on either side. You are several meters below the ground um, and a little bit of light trickles in from that hole above you. Uh, liquid pours down and it's always that like garbage liquid so you know it's not exactly water mm. um, that kind of liquid you get at the bottom of your garbage can or a recycle bin you know that that mix match of smoothiness mm -hmm. gross <laughs> mm, smoothies <laughs> Mm -hmm. everything's yeah. going back to the smoothies That's right uh but yeah, is, this, is this a is this a common thing in the like I, this is, i'm not like it's not like we're normally underground when we're out here in the stacks right no I mean, no usually because you know everything's been covered up and dirt and all sorts of stuff so this is truly a rare find uh and trying to figure out what this could all mean is also something interesting um cool uh by the way guys um i I once we're like a little ways down. Um, I don't know what's going to happen down here, but whatever, we're on our way back out. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of other members of my community, but um, uh, we should be careful when we're coming back out. <laughs> Screw oh, These people might want to rob us of anything we've recovered down here, or, oh. or scoop you out of your power armor. One of the two, you know. Like they were, they led with that joke about that. Uh, um, you know, and so I'd like to see him try. <clears throat> I would not like to see that. I think that would be I, very yeah, terrifying. Say I... <laughs> um, um, can we just do like a quick flash zoom of where, so I actually have, I, since we did the thing at the beginning where we put the king in, that's a flaw. And one, and my thing is you bear a conspicuous scars of a death averted at the last second with makeshift oh. treatments. If oh. you look closely, you will see where the marks have been made where someone has previously tried to. To scoop? Scoop. You got spoon marks in your head somewhere. It's yeah. like, it's like in, in, the, in the back plates, you could see where there's oh. like a lot of like chopping and, sl and like, just like, just like that, like keloid scarring yeah. in that area. And uh, um, always visible and uh painful in some way so for me i'm like that is i'm not even afraid of it them trying because someone already tried once and failed yeah but the rest of us always see those scars when we're walking behind you and we just don't want to see more of them like, mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah a blanket over it yeah. um 
Uh, I am going to take out my my drone. Uh, mm-hmm. I, have a, I have a little spider drone, and I'm going to move it to the front edge of the light source beyond uh, beyond the Capitan also, too. Um, just to give us a little bit, little bit more of a heads up of what's around the corner. Mm. Yeah, and uh, so you have three tunnels kind of pouring out, going yeah. deeper into uh, the ground. Uh, just on a slope, though, it's plastic, you know, that plastic tubing that goes down. Um, water kind of flows down into several uh, kind of very thin uh, cement slates uh, down into things you can't really see below. They're too thin. Um, but every step kind of echoes and reverberates throughout this whole place. But the, the thing said left, right? Left was the holy way. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's also a middle way. Yeah. Confusing. It's two lefts, sort of. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, you know, I think the best pick, pick away and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll head that way, Captain, whatever, whatever you got. If you, if you don't care about your friends, we could tell them to take the right way to, hey, loot, we'll take the left way and loot. You guys go right, you take the loot, you find that way. I don't think they're coming down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pod. Yeah. Do you have any feelings of which way we should go? Back out. Members of the <laughs> you, you're. What do you smell? You're members of the Citadel. Oh, uh, you have you have. I I I trust your second uh, sixth senses about these sort of things. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's a that's a a good point. Um, let me uh let me see if I can, let me see what I can what what I can figure out. Um. So, Mitchell, can I s- smell anything in any particular uh, direction that might seem useful? I don't want to walk into a cloud of poison gas down here. Yeah. Uh, breathe deep. Give me, <laughs> breathe, give me a perception check. Let's see where this takes us. All right. And that's going to be clubs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one suit I have none of. And you can um, do two cards because you are trained in perception. Perfect. Then I will do that and we'll play a uh, five of hearts and a three of diamonds Excellent. for a success. Oh, those are gorgeous cards. Yeah, I figured I had to go a little showy with it. They're mm-hmm. gold leaf cards. I very rarely use them because I initially started using them a lot and they started fraying a little bit and it's like no nope, oh, can't have that yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so giving a nice sweet scent uh sniffing around at each hole um <laughs> the right hole has a very fresh scent to it it kind of reminds you of the you know when those glorious mornings when you burst into the citadel of science you go down into that floor and oh look at all the people who've died yesterday ready for construct work oh god you can see the flesh and like it's only a small amount of decay you can see the bloated stomach as the gases are kind of building up into the stomach uh it's just oh it's fresh death um, the left one, uh, actually the left two kind of have a very similar, like old death smell, something, um, you kind of get at the end of the whole process. The one in the middle has a very particular scent to it. It's hard to figure out what it is, but there's a little hint of what might be lilac. Uh, I'm going to share that with the group. Uh, so down down the down the right is uh, what smells like fresh death, which obviously I very much want to go uh, see what that's about. But I know <laughs> that there are some uh, some concerns uh, along that because that fresh death could be like yeah, I watched, because yeah. someone went down the right, they right. freshly died. That's um, good. That's good. That's good tracking in the process. <laughs> but uh, there's there's n- nothing particularly off about either of the other two. There is some extra little, like, kind of floral scent down the one in the middle here, uh, and that is very intriguing to me. Maybe someone has discovered some lilac-infused uh, 
uh, tanning solution. Uh, I'd be very interested to find out uh, what that is because I feel like there's a lot that could be done with that. So I think we should go down the middle route. Was lilac one of the spices on that meat cat thing that we have found? That's a great question. Was it? Not that we um, named. Yeah, it, it, you didn't. You didn't like taste it when you first licked it. Um, but now that you smell it, like maybe, hmm. maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit. It's hard to. It, you know, the best way for me to um, find that out is if I could just taste that. If I could taste the meat cat again, um, <laughs> that that would be great. If I could just, um, yeah, you, if you could just let me just taste it real quick. You have it, right? Oh, I do have it. That's right. I thought, yep. All right. Uh, so I am definitely going to pull that out and give that another uh, another lick and do my best to not actually take a full on bite of it. <laughs> if you go to take a bite, you're like, what? Get, 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 what are you doing? It's got like a stick coming out of it now. So it's like a little popsicle. <laughs> like, uh, it's been upgraded. <laughs> uh, and yeah, like now that you have the smell and such, you can kind of, especially around the where the chicken feet and the mush of ground beef connect. There's a little bit of lilac around it. All right, yeah, I am definitely getting some of that. I think we should definitely go down this down this way and figure out what that's all about and 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 what we can how I can use that in the future. Yeah. And potentially one of the stretch goals for Necrobotic will be a cookbook. So oh. if this chance oh. is oh. your senses, make sure to follow the Kickstarter oh uh, of all you too. the things you could have said at that moment. <laughs> I, I am so into that. <laughs> what? That's not what I expected at all. Oh. So cool. <laughs> I will say I will say this. I did say for Ki so Coyote and Crow, which just six massively successful. Mm -hmm. They had a flash funding goal of like four recipes from their world from an award winning Native American chef. It's one of the coolest flash wow. funding goals like that I I've ever seen. Yeah, like you're not gonna feel like uh, crazy bad if you missed it. Like, but you're also like you really want that. So, anyways, it was very cool. But I love the idea of people saying, "Here's what, here's what, <laughs> here's some smoothie recipes from the the dead yeah. city of Florence." Right? Here's <laughs> that <laughs> lilac uh, meat cat. Lilac meat cat. Lilac meat cat. Yeah, yeah, that's the stick. point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I just owe someone medical bills and a free book <laughs> if they actually try. Just like, here, you did it. And How so, about it? Um, we're not saying well, we've well. made these recipes. We're saying you could make these recipes. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, uh, but yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. uh, I cock an eyebrow at Colt, <laughs> and I'm like, it looks like we've uh, cracked your case open. And then I like start, this lead. Start yeah, with we're the... On the Bring the drone. Let's let's head on down that way. I'm charged up and uh, exercising my readiness. I like, like Mike. I love that you're just so excited about readiness as a skill. I love that it's written down. <laughs> that it's like not a questionable, nebulous thing. It's like I am ready. Mike, are you ready? Born ready. It's written on my character sheet. That's so great. Exactly. Uh, and speaking of readiness. Uh, as you guys move forward, um, you see that the like the uh, as your feet kind of splash around on this uh, wonderful Coke Mountain Dew garbage <laughs> liquid uh, sticky upon your feet and such, you see these rats and everything kind of milling about and watching you uh, with their little beady black eyes. Um, the whole floor starts to move as you take further steps into it uh gazing down with your light like vibrate uh no just kind of shifting sands of sorts within this liquid looking down with the light you notice that it's just cockroaches the whole uh, ground is covered what? with cockroaches. a lot of wasted protein down here yeah. i know right well now you know where it is so cookbook um <laughs> and they're just kind of moving around at you um but Everyone, like the the hairs on the back of your head, whether they are still there or not, depending on spoonage use, um, th they start standing on end. So, yeah, give me readiness. This is three successes, okay? 
three oh. consequences basically. The first consequence is um well it's blooming. Okay. The second consequence uh is uh exhaustion and the third consequence uh is being knocked down so three different things and basically what you're doing with your successes is you're negating any of these depending on which you prefer uh blooming would be like actual damage to your yourself that's trauma um the exhaustion would be uh removing cards from your hand Mm. Uh, and then the third one will be knocking you down into this pile of cockroaches. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so, uh, and what what is this? What is the relevant stat for this? Yes. Uh, so it is steam. 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 It's clubs. It's just clubs. Clubs. Mm -hmm. Now I have a Joker. Oh, so a Joker. What does that do? It's a success, no matter what. That Boom. equals, yeah, that is a success. That is one, one success. Yeah, one success. One success. Uh, Does it contribute uh, towards like an eight value as an extra success or no? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Um, so do we, so, uh, and and we need each need three in order to avoid all those things? Yeah, all of them. So okay. it might just be which one's more important cool. to and you. And then do we know, for exhaustion, do we know how many cards that's going to remove from our hand, or is that like a wager thing? Uh, Yeah, it will be, for this instance, two. Okay. Because um, removing one, oh. then, is is not really that's much, much of a consequence. Yeah. I was, like, right. curious. Um, And then it's clubs. Mm -hmm. Great. So great, I'm going to burn great. my club here, and I'm going to do a second success, but... Um, I don't want to fully exhaust my hand just yet, so I'll fall down into the into the Excellent. into the roach goop. Woo! So you've eliminated two of the successes, leaving you just with the knockdown, correct? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And uh, is this a one or two card play scenario? It depends. So readiness is a skill. Uh, so if you have readiness, you can play two cards. Otherwise, it's just one card. Oh no! I have I readiness also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, the max I can manage is two successes anyway. So um, I don't want to get bloomed. I don't. I don't want to get exhausted. Yeah, I'll get knocked down into the. All right. No one wants to get bloomed, and I am sad. Yeah. I you won know what? My one club. We we've talked. I've talked about this on previous streams. This is one shot thinking. I'm gonna take the full hit. Forget it. I don't want it to burn any of my cards. I'm I'm a tough. My power armor will protect me, even though I'm ready. I'm maybe overconfident in my power mm -hmm. armor's ability to withstand this if thing, we... and I'm trying to protect my team. Like I'm taking the full hit. I like I like you them. in the front taking the full hit. Yeah. 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 So that the also... story is better. Yeah, so that's also something you can do is you can take like your successes and you can push them over to one of your friends in this instance. So uh, like for Geo, since he has one success left, you could use one of your successes to eliminate that consequence or you could eliminate okay. the consequences of your other two individuals who don't have readiness. I will do I will burn these two then to take to protect my friends or my my to, to just that's my role as protector. Yeah, that is. Um, fantastic because I I have no successes that I can get. <laughs> oh man! So I I am very I would love to use those. It's like yes, please. So I'll throw two to uh, to um, what was your character's name? Portent Pot. of Doom. Portent of Doom. Portent of Doom. Portent. I thought was is it Portent of Doom caster? Yes. Yeah. Pot, podcaster. <laughs> Oh, I had not thought of that. Wow. <laughs> sure you had it. <laughs> Daniel's names are the best. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, yeah, I will I will protect uh Pot. Excellent. All right, so we have Geo being knocked down. Um and I assume you're eliminating the exhaustion and blooming from Pod. Yes. All right, so Pod's getting knocked down. And how about uh Colt? I I am using my one card to not get bloomed. Okay, no one wants to get bloomed, except for no. our, our, our <laughs> dear Technophot. If we yes. all get bloomed, does it dilute the bloomage? Because it's yeah. just yeah. the current between us. Focus, <laughs> like focus, blooming. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So uh, as as you guys are, are walking in and everything, you notice that there you come across um, several strands, almost like the electric lights you would see in a, a YouTubers or VTubers like background, <laughs> like coming from the ceiling and, and they're blinking every now and then uh, and, and mostly look harmless. But as you get closer, um, it gets closer to you as well as they swing forward uh, on maybe some magnetic rail or something. It's kind of hard to figure out and it happens very quick as it Indiana Jones style just races towards you. These threads of, of lit up uh, uh, of lights uh, kind of going from violets and blues. Uh, and I will describe kind of what this looks like, but you guys, you guys know what tuliping is. Um, unfortunately, fortunately uh, for the techno font, your armor does uh, lower the damage of this. So uh, you're not taking any exhaustion, but only trauma. Uh, and the first note of trauma is more of a role play note. Uh, and then mm -hmm. after that, you will have a minus one success on steel, uh, in this case, per trauma. Uh, but right now, it's just a, a role play note to show that things are not going so well. Um, so for you, you were knocked down, and then like electricity, like burning skin and such like that uh and everyone else is knocked down except for the militia who also you have to discard randomly two cards from your hand due to the exhaustion uh randomly i i imagine that so in visually we're walking down this like i'm imagining the teenage mutant ninja turtle sewer yeah yeah <laughs> and uh we're exactly walking right. down and there's like a, probably like a like a path kind of through all of this muck Mm -hmm. And then as one starts to shift, I start to fall. I see Pod about to get zapped by these green, these lights. And then I dive and basically cover Pod while I knock uh, Geo out of the way. But I accidentally fully expose, <laughs> fully expose uh, Colt right behind me. It takes a, a blast as well. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So what, what does everyone do as, as this, like, the, the, the lights go past you and then they flicker off? Um, I think, man, that was, that was some good tech. Like, that was good. As I watch it whiff over, like, whiff over my head from my position, like, staring face up, I'm like, that was smart. <laughs> th 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 thank you, Cap. You okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'm like, like some of my suit is my, my armor is sparking. One of my arms is like kind of glitchy. I have to do yeah. that winter soldier thing where I kind of yeah. lock it back in place. I'm like, ah, ah, I, I check my panel to make sure that there's still like juice running through it. And I have to you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just basically like, I'm, I'm, I'm real, I'm real frigged up. I took a big fracking hit. Um, our, uh, our, uh, mechanically, just out of curiosity, is death losing all of your steel? Is that is that what triggers death, or is there? A... Yeah. So we we do. Um, uh, what's it? So trauma is, is kind of a, a catch all for everything. So it can happen to your all of your stats. Okay. Uh, and each one kind of will reflect different things role play wise. And yeah, the first one is kind of an RP note. And then after that, it gives you a minus one success on any actions based <sighs> on that field <laughs> until you get to four and then you're just gone. Okay. Wow. And is it, it, is it four in one stat or four cumulative across the board? Four in one stat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you get that in like gear, uh, which is like your your special thing that's like the organization you're attached to it would be like compute uh complete like excommunication you you have fucked up fudged up so so badly uh okay. <laughs> i know it's just in my head now i just like the game of it now yeah yeah me too uh yeah it's just you you messed up so badly that they just kind of send you away and you're no longer part of it or maybe you mentally break down or socially just become like taboo to all of society so it's kind of up to you based on how things turn out to, to role play that aspect cool yeah. so fun uh, and then I, 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 as I'm relocating my shoulder and uh, figuring out all my stuff, I look and I see Colt just blasted in the ground. Like, oh no! Down, <laughs> <bubbles>. <laughs> yeah. Pick you up. Are you okay? 
<laughs> Damn, look at the number of that bus. <laughs> Yeah, like Mountain Dew Pepsi mixture <laughs> rolling off the cheeks with a little cockroach like jumping off. I get a dust off. It's not the first time I've been covered in goop out here. It won't be the, <laughs> won't be the last time I've been covered in goop out here. Uh, check my gear just to make sure it's still there. Yeah, everything is uh, sticky, but it's still there. Mm. Well, yeah. uh, I think we, we took on? the wrong tunnel. <laughs> but yeah, so keep going down this one anyway. Uh, we should press on. Okay. All right. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. There wouldn't be a second trap. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Who not. would put two? Tra- Why don't you check to see if there's a second trap? Um, I'll I'll send the spider a little bit further ahead, and like yeah. we'll have it start poking around. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, poking around. There is indeed a second trap right after it, just exactly oh like this uh. one. Uh, and it it kind of flies forward uh going over your drone uh and then kind of resetting back um as it as it does cool we'll we'll trigger it a second time and then while it's going back we'll, we'll just kind of that run day. over yeah <laughs> crawl underneath it um and, and as you guys are kind of crawling underneath this this trap uh you hear clapping <laughs> and it's very awkward like My arm blade comes shooting out, and I'm pointing at whatever is making that noise. Hello? Hello? Uh, are, are you okay? Fine. How are you? I Not mean, great. I'm great. Uh, I don't think everybody is great, but I'm fine. Is there light on this person? Can we see them? Yeah, so as you're kind of looking up, the the light kind of reveals a 1920s-looking housewife um, with red eyes, though, and kind of a a strawberry blonde haircut. Uh, Pristine and and clean, though she stands eight feet tall. What? What? Okay, so the the fact that she's eight feet tall and has red eyes, can do I pick up on this uh, on her being some sort of construct? Like, yeah, like you you especially remember the old days where they didn't tan the skin, uh, but this was just too damaging for people. But this kind of is reminiscent of those those older older models of construct. Hi. <laughs> um, my name's Pod, and I think I'm in love with you. <laughs> well, Pod, I would like to invite each of you guys into my domicile. Uh, I've prepared meatloaf. Um, and I guess we can discuss it there. Uh, you are obviously too enthusiastic, tenacious to be flayed and bloomed by the various amounts of traps. And though I definitely think one of you would have died on the way, and she's like looking over at Colt. Um, I think it's best to just get this over here and now. Are you a threat? <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to are you what is your intention i mean declare declare your your meat, operation meat, meatloaf uh, meatloaf is my intention i intend to place a well curated and developed um recipe that's been passed down by humanity uh for several times of course this recipe has lots of stuff about the original creator's life beforehand but the further you scroll um <laughs> Eventually, you get to the the meat of the matter, as it were. Um, yeah, yeah. But, I'm going to feed it to you, not myself, but I will provide utensils that will be placed upon a table. Uh, and I assume, using your fingers and hands, uh, and a slight bit of dexterity, you will place it into your mouth, uh, saliva dripping upon it, and maybe you will taste it with your tongue and then swallow it. Does that sound satisfactory to you? 
this is this is clearly like unusual to see this a construct with being a person right oh yeah constructs this don't is, talk yeah. constructs do not talk at mm -hmm. all and, and this one speaking with such uh personalities especially super weird you're you're basically wow. looking at a dead person talking this thing is this thing is not passing the Turing test but is yeah. so damn close <laughs> it's yeah. unnerving <laughs> This uh, is uncanny valley in Capitan so hard yeah. where he's just like, what I, I I look around to everybody and I just don't know how to react. And this is the first time in like a long time I don't know how to react to a situation. Pod is like puppy dog eyes, I, like a hundred percent just what whatever she wants. Uh, yeah, I I mean like I've 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 heard about this meatloaf. I've read some recipes for this thing also too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, but uh, I uh, when I was eight years old, my family used to tuck me in, and then three pages later, you're gonna need salt. <laughs> I'm gonna need to see your uh, meat processing permit. Uh, that seems, uh, I guess, sort of unnecessary. I mean, I feel like the fact of my existence goes against many of the scientific codexes that humanity seems to be into nowadays and so i guess it, it'd be the same if you if i ripped off your legs but then you gave me a parking ticket that's true i was really just going with the laws i knew you'd broken i have to look Wait. up the other laws later that's fair Wait, you know what you are of course you... i think that's the basis of a person is knowing what you are in i guess the most basic of sense right not that I know my purpose or where I'm going, but I at least understand who I am and what I'd like to do. What um, what is what is what is uh what is your name? Cynthia Five. So you know wait, do you think you're human or you know that you're a dead construct? You're, I mean, you're not real. You're not. You're not. You are not supposed to exist. You're supposed to be dead construct. Okay, I feel like maybe the uh, saying maybe that she's not real is 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 not accurate because she's right here. Yeah, and she's talking it's to quite. Us. I mean, let let's think of it this way. And she places a hand upon like the cement and rubber walls and just kind of scratches down, and you see like large chunks of cement kind of falling down as she does. Does that right, seem real? Not but you're not supposed to think. You're not supposed to feel. You're not supposed to be a person. You're supposed to be dead. I feel like you're hurting my feelings. I don't know if it's yeah. intentional or accidental. I, yeah, I do why? feel like you're being rude. Like she's just because it, she she isn't supposed to doesn't mean that she isn't doing that. And so I think that 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 challenges. I've got a lot of worldviews that are being challenged right now in a way that I really really love. Look, I've just heard great things about meatloaf, and I am 100 percent down to try this. <laughs> Excellent. Well, here, my, here's what I my, think. I my think, armor is still sparking from where she tried to kill us. Well, I mean, okay, but so I I don't know how I feel about any of this, I'll be honest. But right now, it feels like you're behaving in a way that also justifies the potential use of force to try to keep you away because you're challenging the reality of them being an extant thing. Uh, yeah. So, so... A I'm just saying. Spring don't. pops off of my brain. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. What the hell? Maybe, maybe, maybe don't be the reason the traps were set right now until we till we know what's mm. going on. Yes, I think the best way forward is to shed your humanity and think more rationally with compassion. Oh, I don't know about the shedding the humanity part, but I'm totally on board with the second. Hard True. I, I guess, in my opinion, humanity has always been quick to destroy anything different. So that aspect, leave it at the door, um, and come follow me. Uh, does the uh, the little one looking over at Colt need to be carried? I can walk. Okay. All right. Well, come on. I'm I'm tentative. I'm at the back of the party now. I'm I'm tentative. And I am at the front. We have totally changed places. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> tap me in. I was like, if I knew this was down here. 
Yeah. And like the the tunnel ends at a uh, a very rustic uh, green door with uh, shattered glass uh, in the center, very rectangular. Um, there is a uh, Italian flag uh, kind of attached to it, and it's actually going through the mm. wall, uh, but trying to look kind of majestic in its own way. There's a fan blowing on it so that it has like a little bit of a flourish. Um, she opens the door and inside it's like the circular little hovel uh, that's kind of pieced together of of what someone's idea of the 1920s like Wanda Vision-esque look and feel of, of stuff are. Um, very sitcom -y, very like taken from TVs and such like that. There are three kitchens and it just goes from kitchen to kitchen to kitchen. <laughs> a couch and a dining room table. Um, there is also um, a construct with like a, a business suit and carrying a briefcase uh, but this one is more tanned and, and it's not moving uh, definitely more of a recent model um, yeah she says come on in uh, please sit down on the dining room table uh, I guess next to not down on who is who is who is this strapping this is... fellow my uh husband uh temporarily we're seeing how it works i haven't quite gotten him to say anything not very communicative but this is also something that i think men deal with and struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis communicating their feelings so i don't quite know if it's something i should pursue or if i should scrap it and try again let scrap it <clears throat> um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think there's 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 a lot of uh, I've I've got a lot. Of, uh, I would love to talk with you about that more in depth. I've got a lot of thoughts. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, is there thing? functioning technology in this area? Uh, yeah, definitely from the the techno font. Like, there's a, a blender. Uh, everything like uh, <laughs> in terms of OSHA and stuff. It's a it's a nightmare with like several cords like going to the same place and there's like water dripping on it and everything <laughs> um, yeah it's just like it's a nightmare cool i'm gonna help with cord management a little bit then uh <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm gonna guess mostly appliances since we're talking about not like the 20s to 50s tech um you know uh but i'll, I'll see if i can get the tv to work also too yeah well, now, why don't I... you... oh sir go ahead yeah why don't you give me a heart Give me, give me, see if you can do this in a way that is, I guess, nice, gentle. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, I am going, to, uh, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, toss out, I've got an ace and a two of hearts. We'll go ahead and use both of those. All right, excellent. Um, yeah, she, she looks at you, and you can kind of see for an instance that her eyes kind of flash with a, a sort of fiery red um and looking at her fingers like the there's a lot of muscle in terms of her hands which are almost like claws the more she kind of uh grips them together um but she kind of breathes and lets you play with her stuff yeah well i think I'll, like i'll i'll make commentary like oh my gosh this is such a like such an amazing like i'll be very complimentary because i am very excited because this is a yeah random spot of working technology out in the middle of the hub so it is it is like a hundred percent complimentary let me build on this space you've made not you're doing this wrong and bad. yeah not like uh, switching it up yeah and it's <laughs> like this it it looks like a, a a tv from 2000s that have been has been modded to look more like a tube right like a, one of those it's like, like a, it's like a TV. flat screen shoved up to the front of yeah a, exactly of an old it's TV like, model. Yeah. so uh awesome yeah no so i've been messing around with that for a little bit now would i know that these old model because it's not just a person it's a person with mechanical what i would like a power armor internal power armor kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah like constructs are a mix between uh biological science that keeps their organs together and steampunk uh reminiscent stuff attached to their back so gears and stuff that allow you to to manipulate and program uh you can't see the gears on this person because they have like a, a lovely dress on right, right. uh but usually like contracts of today the they're not wearing clothes so you can kind of see uh their stuff plainly on the back i'm just kind of still like kind of slack jawed looking around at everybody like 
why does nobody think this is as crazy as I think it is? You know, like I'm just the completely the 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 skeptic at this point. Like, well, I, yeah, I think want. the question is, what is how does Colt Hammer feel about all this? That's the real question. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm playing along, but I've stumbled into a den of sin and inequity, and I'm just trying to keep my cool <laughs> long enough to get out of this alive. <laughs> my hand is near my repeating crossbow. <laughs> You, backs you, to a wall you've noted all the osha violations yeah <laughs> you're like oh god they are not gonna pass this business is going to fail we're gonna have to if pod <laughs> asks this person to step on him i'm out of here man <laughs> <laughs> i'm out of here <laughs> look over pods on the ground like yeah, yeah. I, I, I i do have a question for you mm -hmm. um how how long have you been aware good way to say that I have always been aware, but it is only in the last couple of decades. It, If you could imagine when you're at the bottom of a swimming pool and you see the lights and sounds and such just on the surface, right? And then you start to float up, you swim up, and then you break through the water and everything just becomes more clear and you're able to move and and speak and shout. It's like that. Have Dude. you ever been... Under underwater? No. You should try it sometime. It. I don't think it's for me. Um. <laughs> I, so do does does this does this mean do all? So do all constructs? No. Are they all? aware in some way this i have so many questions are there any others like you like have you met yeah. anybody else like quite like you I... no i haven't unfortunately mm. um and i guess to your question dear architect maybe it's best for you not to dwell on it because i don't see humanity moving forward wrestling with that sort of moral quandary i think that gives me my answer uh, I need a career change. Wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess this brings us creature. to the conclusion of our conversation. And she pulls out the meatloaf and places it on the table and sets the dinnerware out and begins slicing it, motioning for you guys to sit on these kind of cardboard boxes. Now, obviously. How... How long have you been here? A decade. You just put in so much great work. I'm just like, this is this is amazing. Thank you. I don't have visitors often. I'd like some more, but there's always a conclusion of the conversation. You understand? You're afraid of people like me. No, I'm not afraid of people like any of you individually. It's not much of an issue to deal with. It's the collective that I fear. And with knowledge of this place and of myself, the inquisitive minds that you are, well, it puts me in quite a predicament. Obviously, I can't let you go because then the collective will come. And then what will happen to me? Immediately. My boss knows I'm here. <laughs> Immediately, I'm like, there it is. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah. There it is. Yeah, it is. Right, here we go. <laughs> like, oh, God. It's really funny. I, 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 I yeah, I, I'm, because I don't know that my character is actually super, like, is probably understanding of that statement while wary, whereas I don't know that Pod has it. <laughs> yeah. It is, though. Uh, have, you, have you let anyone go before? A few, yes. And did the collective come? No. If anything, something more beautiful came out of it, which was kind of the reason for the hook. I just didn't think it would be the fish that you are all uh, who would come before me with morality that I don't think can be shifted. Maybe a few of you can be shifted, but certainly the individual with the armor and the wet one uh, will find it very difficult to keep this under cover. Colt, I think she's talking about us. Yep. And uh, as the 
Oh no, are we the law enforcement? Are we the order? Y'all are. <laughs> we are literally. I mean, the, boot. the two of, yeah, yeah. One of you is, yeah. One of you is the reverse hook and the other one is. Oh no. And so. And I, I kind of turn to Colt and I'm like, we need to go. There was danger here for us. Leave, yep. And I look no, towards. It doesn't have to be danger. What is the alternative? I suddenly, I, you, you say I can't be swayed, but you've told me that all of you, and I point to the, the guy, the her husband, mm -hmm. have life. When all I've been told is that there's nothing but death in there and there's no real, how can, how can I not be swayed by, I'm a protector of life. How can I not be swayed? This You're telling me, and I point to the husband, and I was like, at, at some level, I can still be understood and empathize with this person. That it's a person. But it's a matter of, um, it's a matter of free will and having it taken. If you don't let us leave, you're just a, just as bad as the people who would do this to them. Oh no, I my morality has shifted to a place where I guess I'm like an animal. I will rip and claw and bury my hands into those things that would seek to end my existence. Selfishly, of course. Um, I've heard the squeals of men um, gasping for life as I rip them apart and, you know, use their skin for lamps, much like humanity does nowadays, uh, kind of an ode to the creation. Um, but but we don't, very angry. No, no, no one needs to do any of that to anyone here right now, I think, uh, is, is the, the crux of this, is that we can all get out of this happy and healthy and safe and stay that way, right? I hope so. I so, turn to Colt. Yeah. She's confessed. To, she's confessing to murder. If she's, a, if she's a living being, she has to be held accountable. Well, I mean, do you, do you, hold, a, do you hold a dog accountable? Yeah. Do, you hold, do, you hold a, do you hold a bear accountable? There's no laws about constructs doing these things. I think, and I think if she came peacefully into the uh the empire in front of the scientific council uh you know we would we'd overlook a great many things just to have her give her case towards maybe more enlightened minds do you think that would be good for humanity well let me let me ask you a question yes do, would you have humanity stop making people like you there is no one else like me as far as I'm concerned, but mm -hmm. construct in of itself, I think if humanity is going to persist, they rely upon it too heavily. Do you think of yourself as a person or as a construct? Person. So you, if you want to be considered a person by others, wouldn't you have to adhere to the societal the social contracts that build society as in not flaying and blooming human beings and hearing that this is not traps. You're saying you're not set traps. You've physically buried your hands in yes. humanity. That's not a trap. That is very different. But as, as, I mean, she did say that it was self-defense, right? That it was, it was to, to out, of, out of a sense of self-preservation. It is. And self-preservation, so which was aggressive. I think what? destroying others is not a sustainable path to self-preservation. I didn't expect to be answering questions of what consciousness is on <laughs> <laughs> a game stream. This is blowing my mind. <laughs> I guess here, here's the biggest question. In your history, has humanity ever looked at something different and not made a mockery or destroyed it? Well, uh, I am uh, afflicted with a, a severe amount of ostracism in my, even amongst my peers. But I think, I think learning to coexist is part of 
the you know our condition i don't know i think the the historical files uh and she kind of pulls out a vhs tape of king kong mm. uh an alien mm. i think they tell a different story well i think i think a, a large part of it is that the you know some of these struggles are about the fact that that humanity doesn't understand but then there's there's always a a push for that understanding and that acceptance and that eventually that it it, it does come around can can we can we just pause for a minute and just take a moment to recognize that she is a full on galaxy questing in this moment and that I yeah. yes. absolutely <laughs> love it. Yes. <laughs> I mean yeah. I just, the historical the historical <laughs> documents show. I'm I, I'll be honest with you, I'm I'm blown away by how much like inner struggle I'm having as a human being <laughs> right now. This is this is such an interesting point, but uh, uh, back in character, in character. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, I, I mean, it just boils down to the the risk of giving us four a chance. Because if we leave, if you if you decide to not let us leave here and murder us like you've murdered other men, then that's not what we're talking about here. Because if 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 any other organic born person tried to do that to me, they would be subject to the laws. It's, you now have a choice of continuing to live like an animal or facing the accountability for the life you are living as a person. And because we need to leave here. And if you don't let us leave here, you're nothing more than the animal that we would be collective would assume you are. So I think there's two ways forward. I think either you pull on my heartstrings and I am merciful and I put my trust into you and connect you to others who believe in me as well. Or you fail to empathize with me and I will start with the armored one. Um, I've watched lots of shows on crab eating uh the cracking of the hard parts and i believe once you're down um the others will be well best not talk about it eat your meatloaf it's lovely i eat, I'm the, I eat the meatloaf <laughs> absolutely yeah D digging into this meatloaf you're asking the guy in power armor to empathize with someone who's confessed to <laughs> murder. And I look at the cop who, look, I hate that I'm this person now too. I, Mike <laughs> does not, Mike hates this. Mike hates this. <laughs> El Capitan is uh, uh, st struggling with just the, the sheer violence of the way she's describing how much she wants to murder me. <laughs> Um, I, I, I think that I, th I think that we should. I like that first option of of the two. I don't think anyone needs to die, um, and I think that we can all be trustworthy. Um, and and I think that those who choose to go back uh, can maybe we can all work together to try and come up with a way for. Um, moving forward with uh, acceptance and trying to maybe um, work on dismantling this apparently horrifying system we've dis we've we've created. <laughs> so cumulatively, you guys need six successes uh, of hearts uh, oh, no. oh, in order to get this person to trust you. But it, it's cumulative, so you guys can all put into yeah. the hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm lucky. So I got tell three me, hearts. Tell me. That's great. I'm so. I so, also oh, have three hearts. Oh, I thank have two. goodness! Because I am. I'm down to two cards, and neither of them is a heart. So That's it a... is is as normal. Either playing one uh, or two, uh, based on skill or okay. with with normal. So I will say, because he the uh, Geo as well as Pod seem more 
into it, you guys can play two cards each. Um, otherwise, the other two will have to have something to justify so, two cards. So I don't have any hearts. I can, however, toss in a success via the rest of my cards. Uh, I have a six and a four of hearts. So that's three successes there, I think. Yep. I got one. As the guy who she's trying to kill. That's fine. <laughs> she's not trying to kill. She's prepared yeah. if she has to. All right. Go check. Oh, man. All right. It looks like you need... guys. Cool. Yeah, six is I... what you needed. I think it's more about calming me and Colt down. Yeah, it might just be like. It might be. The middle. I still haven't figured out if I'm lying or not, just to get out of a violent situation. Oh no! <laughs> oh, that's good. I, no, I, 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 yeah, I love that. Um, if I hit zero cards, that just means I'm playing blind until I've rested. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Great. That's where I'm at. All right. Like as you guys are eating this meatloaf, going through these conversations and stuff like that, um, she's smiling by the end of it. A little bit of a uh, rosy blush going to her cheeks, uh, almost pushed forward. Um, you can see like the blood or something pumping into the cheeks to create such an effect. <laughs> it's just uh, like lights behind. Uh, <laughs> it's like buried uh, lights, uh, just uh, bit rosy circles. Uh, like, like exactly, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. well. I've had a great dinner, and I believe you. I think with you four, something beautiful can happen of this. One little thing, though. There are others who know about me within the city. So um, they will be watching. Um, and I suggest you make contact uh, post haste uh, so you can understand more of what the world is really like. Uh so I I don't know how to bring this up, but I do think it's important. There are a couple of people waiting outside right now on the surface who are going to expect that we have brought back something of value or they're going to question what we did down here. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it might not be of value, but... Uh, and she goes over to the construct and just pushes her fist right through its chest, oh, uh, yeah. ripping out the spine. Uh, and you see like blood and fluid drip out of it. And she just kind of tosses the top half over onto the table. Some of the meatloaf flies into the air, spilling out on it. Did anyone want a to-go cup? <laughs> uh, no, this is fine. Also, I'm, I can't imagine what Pod is feeling right now other than hope. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Up on the on the topic on the on the topic of to go, um, what if I stayed here? What? <laughs> Dang. I've never she's had. With us, right? I've never had anyone wanting to stay here before. Yes, you may stay. Thank thank you. Uh, I I I feel like we can work together. Um, really well and uh I, I look forward to that i as well also step oh, on me no, uh... <laughs> <That's a> step. <laughs> do it oh my <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile i'm just looking at the splattered spine going on <laughs> What the fuck is going on over here? It got on my meatloaf. Oh no! I have not touched that. I have not touched that meatloaf. He's just been sitting there like awesome. on his power armor that adjusts to lock in place. He just yeah, like... yeah. I'll, I'll, it's not my normal fare, but I'll I'll take the 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 cerebral and spinal column that she's tossed off, and then like, sure. Uh, wow. Uh. That's so great. Um, and then uh, and then we get the list of who we need to contact. And then I, I just turn him like, please. <sighs> In order for me to feel okay about this, you can't kill any more people. You can't. 
at least what until the lines have been drawn what what about this what about this what if like pot is staying mm-hmm. right and like if somebody if somebody was attacking you you would defend yourself that's that's the primary concern here that i'm sorry we didn't ever ask you with cynthia five is that right correct mm-hmm. uh uh sorry out of character i was yelling at a teenager at that point in time uh the um we uh um formerly married with two children okay um the uh what if what if like you i mean you seem to have a desire for self-preservation i don't desire you to not be able to, to take care of yourself or our good friend pod here is it fair capitan that that maybe we could get pod's account of any deaths that happen before we judge them too harshly to see uh, a non repersoned person's perspective on all of this. Right. And then I will pull out a, some sort of con- a video recording device where mm-hmm. just to like, uh, for you to please pod, just you're a scientist. Yes. Track. Of course. Do- document evidence. Of course. You know? But we need to. I just want to. I, I just need to know that if anyone dies, it will be because there was no other way. Of course, I will. No I will way. do everything I can. <laughs> Pinky, <laughs> Pinky <laughs> promise with the giant robot Excellent. lady. This is the best the giant scene. zombie robot lady. Yeah. <laughs> she she puts a hand like over uh pod's like shoulder uh and says, "Well, um, my newly acquired friend and I." Have much to discuss, you three. I look forward to seeing you again. Um, yeah, the uh, way should be clear. Uh, and I, I'm sure you have plenty of great stuff here. But I'm just like any food or snacks <laughs> that I have with me. I'm gonna hand over to Pod because I'm not sure what the food situation is down here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I mean, well, Pod did eat the meat cat, so I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure Pod is thrilled. I'm just, I mean, you know, a, route, a balanced diet is incredibly important. Um, yes. So it's hard to get smoothies down here. So. Yeah. So and are you then, three uh, heading I, out? Yeah. I'll lead everybody out and power my lights back on and just kind of look back at Pod. Yeah, they're and... waving. We'll, we'll Th- thank you, all, all of you. Bye. Goodbye. I really Fuck. want like the American Gothic scene, like yeah. clothing. Like, Todd's, yeah. got, Todd's got some sort of pole in his arm. His eight foot tall friend is next to him. Now let's pretend uh, that no one said the F word. And then as I'm walking out, I turn to Colt. I'm like, she's going to fucking kill that guy. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, so you three are able to safely kind of crawl back up. Um, the other um, uh, techno fonts are kind of like, what happened? Uh, there are a bunch of dead people, like down so many there. traps. Um, oh we, man, we found some. We found some dead automatons also too, which is really weird. And I'll just throw the bloody spine at them and be like, uh, you know, not not the normal fare, but was the easiest yeah. thing to grab. We just figured once we hit all the dead bodies that it probably wasn't worth figuring out what killed them. And, you know, we went the other way and then found more dead bodies and then came back. And They'll yeah. see the damage on my armor and be like, well, I thank God I had this armor. Otherwise I would have been bloomed. Yeah. <laughs> bloomed. Oh, okay. Well, good thing you guys. Uh, well, everything's close is clear. Um, we'll yeah. see you captain on the prescribed date on our cap calendar. Yeah, sh- sure. Fine. Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> And then I walk away and I'm like, Colt, uh, Gio, we should probably exchange contact information. We met today. <laughs> yeah. like, I, am, I we, imagine we're probably smoothie. all in the smoothie shop. Like, the, like yeah. the, the four blocks around there are just inhabited by the four of us historically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, we, we don't know each other because why would we ever talk to another person? But like, This is yeah. like I Am Legend where he sets up the mannequins in the yeah, video yeah. store. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only those mannequins are alive and gaining sentience, and that's the problem. Exactly. Um, and so, 
Uh, awesome. Uh, do we want any? Do we want any closing vignettes, or is there? Uh, is there? Anything yeah. Else so we wanna... every we'll, we'll do a pod last because uh, there's something special for him. But everyone, what's kind of like when you return home? What are, What are you doing? What's kind of your final moments in this uh, wonderful macabre story? I am horrified that I'm. I'm now looking around, and I'm suddenly. You know how like when you when you when you hear something or see something. You start to see it everywhere. And now every construct <laughs> I see, I'm like just racked with guilt of it. Oh, it, do they, are they trapped in there? Is that a person? Like just full existential kind of melting down happening. Yeah. And it, it's very odd because it seems like every construct uh, moves its face towards you as you're walking down the street, almost looking back at you as you look at them. That just made my stomach drop, like in real life. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. halfway to construct. Oh man, yeah, that's me. John, how's uh, how's Colt handling everything? I'm trying to think. Is the, is the case closed? Uh, <laughs> that's it's up solved. to you. <laughs> I think animals are still going to be disappearing, though. So I can't, I can't mark it as done. Um, I'm not going to do any more work on it, though. So I'm, I'm moving it to done. Uh, yeah. if, if my supervisor comes to me saying, "I'm like, oh, a new a new copycat criminal." Well, yeah. Oh, get them. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just, so just goes yeah. in like a file. I just put the file in the warehouse and then pour myself a couple fingers of scotch and then I don't know, just look into the sunset. <laughs> um, uh. I think. For Geo, this is actually just super reaffirming of, yeah, like, thank goodness I was not super into uh, into flesh stuff. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. we should go back to the old ways of, of doing things. Um, I think he starts a blog, which is really just him typing on this old computer he started because yeah. there's no one to read it. But he does, he does like, download copies uh, on old floppy disks and takes them to... Uh, Takes them to Pod and, and Cynthia, whatever he goes to visit. Because I do imagine that I, I am like, I am concerned about Pod to the point of like, I'll drop off food. Also, this is this seems like a cool new hub for me to explore for other things, especially if other people are convinced it's super dangerous because it is. But yeah. potentially thinking there's probably got to be some good stuff buried in there that I can get Cynthia to tell me how to work around the traps i can i can harvest stuff so i'm ha I'm happy to retcon into whatever pod pod says along whatever happens to pod also with that uh so if i find his dead body splayed out one day that's fine but initially like yeah i'm like i'll like take i'll, I'll make sure he has supplies probably yeah. set up some sort of radio system uh initially or at least go back one time with stuff and maybe die also who knows like yeah um, so here here's the thing the like, when you ooh, a sega saturn yeah <laughs> whenever you try to go back um it's impossible to find when you come back to the area you realize that there's several meters of junk that is over what you believe is the whole and even kind of scrambling you you just kind of can never find that grate that led down it's just Hmm. that's fine who knows then what I, then, then i think that i think what we will see after that first time back is me regularly scrambling through the radio frequencies and doing like a like pod pod like pod yeah like are you there pod pod like we'll see me scanning radio frequencies in the future yeah. listen for tiny tim and i guess i'll be on the look in that case i'll be on the lookout for more um uh hooks you know, tr wire bound trash bags Mm. Excellent. All right, uh, Pod, how you doing? Great. <laughs> you know, like, like I said, my my worldview's been challenged, and I, I had a a a brief, what am I doing with my life, and then a very quick something new, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm excited to work with Cynthia to see what we can do about it. Get getting. Yeah, I I I feel like I would probably do a lot of like going to the the surface and getting things that we both need, uh, and like uh, trying to kind of be that that gopher almost uh, for her, yeah. while um, also like working on how we can. Yeah, sadly, she doesn't need a gopher. 
what you find as she leads you to another room hidden behind the yeah. fridge, uh, she says, um, I would like to show you to the work study. And I'm sorry, to the what? The work study. Oh, okay. Yeah, I dabble, um, as every housewife should. I'm 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 very excited. I I have uh, I'm I'm I do quite a bit of dabbling myself. Uh, <laughs> what do you dabble in? And she opens the door, and you can hear kind of crying in this very dark room. No, a like a a, <laughs> a medical slab is in the middle, and hooks are hanging from the the ceiling. Um, there are about eight people humans alive uh dangling from these hooks with barbed wire uh keeping their hands and feet bound together um as she looks around uh she turns on one of the lights and, and smiles down at you it's time to make more children Love a oh jeez. It was people. <laughs> the <laughs> meatloaf was people, and that's where we'll we'll end it. I, yeah. I think that's what? A, a lovely, appropriate place. Uh, that would be. I'm not gonna lie. The best campaign starter to be like, yeah, we had one character die, so they came back the next session <laughs> as somebody, or get locked underground in an unfindable place. Uh, oh man! Wow. Oh. <laughs> Bravo, Mitchell. That was Why? amazing. So that was good. so good. That was that a was lot of fun, so guys. Wow. You guys were brilliant. Oh. Um, that was uh, awesome. Sorry, I was in the middle of banning a bot that was just trying to spam the feed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want followers? Yeah. yeah. I do. Not, not from you, bot. Um, it's just so... like a construct. What if that bot is sentient? What yeah. What if the bot has come to my feeling? Oh, man. I was right. <laughs> well... Sort of. We don't know. We, be an assistant. They could have lived happily ever after. All I right. Don't. Well, if, then Pod's a monster too. If Pod was into that, you know, who knows? I I was fully prepared for it to come out that Pod was a cannibal and was like, oh, oh. just like super into you know constructs because it was a you know a form of sustenance. But uh, <laughs> then coming up with a a Freaking Lady Dimitrescu style. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's oh, let's do our reaction yeah. roll. Reaction roll is a live stream within a live stream. It's a chance for us to sit down with a creator of a game who we just played and talk to them about what our experience was, ask them questions, and learn more about it. Today we were playing Necrobiotic with Mitchell from Penny for a tale, who's the project manager for the game. Uh, I am super excited. I had an absolute blast uh, playing the game, but let's uh, let's hear from some other folks first. Uh, let's start out with uh, first time on the channel, uh, John. John, go ahead and tell us, uh, tell people who you are, what you do, uh, but also what your experience was like playing Necrobiotic. Yeah, hi, I'm John, um, YouTuber, improviser, attempting comedian, aspiring comedian. Um, uh, this was really fun. I like the setting a lot. I like the um, the card uh, system in place of dice. I think it gives you this interesting kind of... Um, it's less than completely random and still has this kind of like resource management thing to it. it, it like, I think maybe it's because of the setting, but it makes me feel like I'm playing Bioshock 1 a little bit in, in, in good ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, I love that game. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I I really like these pre-gen characters. I'd like I'd be I'd love to see like the full like actual rules on what kinds of characters and classes there are because these are very flavorful and I liked it a lot. Yay! Do they taste they taste like a little bit of duck mixed with cat mixed with sage. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... Uh, do you have any 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 questions about that? Oh yes, great question. Um... Come back to me. I'll think of some good stuff. That's good. We'll <laughs> pop up to uh, Mike uh, Mercadal. Uh, yes. Mike, tell us uh, a little bit about your experience, uh, who you are, what you do, uh, and where people can find you, too. Uh, Mike Mercadal, at Mike Mercadal on all social media platforms. And uh, there's a new <clears> – <throat> I'm a member of the Missing Sock Podcast Network with uh, RLX Murray, who's been on a bunch of stuff. And there, uh, you can find all my stuff through my social media. But uh, there's a new um, – because of COVID, my live comedy show got shut down. I'm bringing that back. It's called Zeros on Heroes, 
and it's like a pop culture nerd based and it will have a um it used to be like an interactive show that it was live and i'm going to bring it back in a live stream format so if you go to zeros on heroes on social media and on twitch there'll be a very cool just uh, start following there'll be new stuff coming up soon very cool tell us about your experience playing necrobiotic i first of all i loved the world the 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 zombie ro like you know like when they mash two things like sci-fi and whatever together sometimes it's like it feels shoehorned but this like the idea that the human population is dwindling and they're needing to reanimate dead bodies in some way awesome super solid <laughs> i would love to like like <sighs> Yeah, like I, 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 love, I wish there was like, I would love to see artists' renditions of all of this stuff. I would love to see the art because this sounds like such a visually interesting world. Ooh, it, yeah. it, depending on how the artist would take it, you could get like Judge Dredd vibes, like where there's like Mega City and then like the cursed lands outside of the city. Or you could get something as uh, like, um, just like real grim, dark, you know, cyberpunk. But it, I just love the idea of, um, what's the what's the one i'm thinking of um like visual I, I i i'm a visual person so i start to like build all of these visuals in my head and the opening scene with the smoothie coming out of the, <laughs> the dead, zombie bot was awesome and how every, it's like nobody even flinches like that's just the way life <laughs> is now is very interesting is is it's just like um it, it's it's super cool yeah i, if I, I, really, I, can... I really dug it if I can figure out how to bring that to a con, I, I will. Yes. Just put it put it in the so, back of the booth, and people can get their own. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just gotta figure yeah. out like how do I put that on a person right. uh, without having to. <laughs> well, I was stuff. I was imagining also for me for the power because in terms of the game mechanics, I love the card breakdown that you guys came up with. Mm -hmm. That 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 works really well for like versatility in terms of you know not just rolling dice it feels like you have a little bit more like control over something mm -hmm. that you should be good at you know the the odds of you pulling the cards based on your skills is is kind of leans everything into your favor for the things that you're good at and vice versa for the things that you're bad at um the the i think if if we would have had a little bit more time to know what each of us had available to us in terms of like I, I as I was going through, I was just reading the class breakdown or the what yeah you would call it, and then I was like, oh, there's a thing there, and then I just said it, and then like, oh, there's a thing there, and then I just said it, and uh, but like, there's a lot of like opportunity to to expand on. I guess if we have a longer campaign, items that we would pick up, abilities that we would gain, kind of organically, ironically enough, organically that <laughs> that that would come mm -hmm. from our play styles, which I think this this lends itself to pretty pretty freely yeah yeah i dug it man it's great and i love the world and i think i i, I would love to see art um, oh, and actually God, i was gonna say so Mitchell, I, know you, to Mitchell, I know you have art if i show the art you know people will just see uh you're sharing your screen thing but if you want to share any of the art in just a second you are absolutely welcome to oh, yeah you can course. show the audience and people I, i've got another scene set up that'll make that a little easier uh but um if you have questions and you're watching live right now go ahead and type them in also too about the mm -hmm. setting about the mechanics about anything else um and uh we'll, we'll toss those out also uh but uh daniel tell us a little bit about your experience playing also who you are what you do yeah uh so like it seems pretty much everyone else i'm a podcaster comedian improviser uh i have several podcasts that i'm currently a uh, a, a part of i'd say right now my most active one is called frankenstein's jukebox which is a music podcast where we talk about songs and then create a new one uh based off of the songs that we talk about um that's dope it's a lot of fun uh but uh i i loved this this was so much fun again like the world is such a, a fascinating, immersive world. Um, similarly, art-wise, like I was picturing the whole thing, and it was like this combination of H.R. Geiger and Mike Mignola art, just like <laughs> all combined. And it's like that is right within my aesthetic. Uh, I just love it so much. And the story was fascinating. Uh, it was uh, I I love the card mechanic as well. I think that's such a fresh take 
Um, and I guess that kind of segues into my question of like, how when when you're designing an RPG that isn't dice based and isn't like just a narrative thing, what like what's your approach to something like that? How do you like? I feel like you would have to completely change kind of the way that you you think about that sort yeah. of yeah yeah I think for like um uh the the reason for the the cars and everything was we wanted something to reflect the setting which was what what do you do to survive and more of a give and take with every scenario which was kind of like why we really enjoyed the consequence aspect of it because you can dictate like what's important to me do i want to save my friends do i want to save myself am i okay getting a little bit of damage do i want to stay up on my feet um and especially in social encounters this becomes more nuanced as you're trying to figure out how you want a person to feel towards you like different consequences and stuff like that um and so for for that it was just kind of uh it felt so smooth with the setting where everything is like what what are you willing to do to keep humanity mm. moving forward um and i also like the the breath because it i think reflects you know like spoons during a given day you wake up and you're like yeah i can talk today or or today you're like yeah i can't really i i was worn out yesterday i'm done talking to people today uh so you can look at your deck and be like okay this this is how i want to deal with the rest of my day um and then also in that same take like even if you're like a muscle bound like i just fight things all the time and you pull that heart you at least know at least one time during the day you'll be able to successfully get past a social encounter like and that that speaks to me a lot when especially in other games where it's difficult for someone who has like no charisma whatsoever to make an impact socially mm. um and so we really wanted an opportunity for everyone to do anything even like pod will be able to punch someone in the face and do very well at least one time a day uh, they, they will have that opportunity to to be impactful in a combat um and so yeah that was kind of our our take on it and how we approached it nice no, and I and I love that because like there is a level of in some things you're like attack the character sheet right like that's a that's a common move as a GM being like hey I'm not just gonna start like it's 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 why the rust monster in Dungeons and Dragons was invented we're not just gonna attack their HP anymore like we're gonna have a creature mm -hmm. that will start ki killing your gear uh, if you're not careful right uh, or taking away abilities or attacking stats it's always an interesting thing and even like exhaustion does that Exa like I could be hanging on to that one heart which my character was not good yeah at. and it made hearts when they came up i held on to them until i knew i needed like i'm not going to spend that if i can spend something else um and but also i could get hit with exhaustion and then have to lose that potentially so there is this this very cool give and take there's there's if anybody's familiar with deck building mechanics it's going to feel very familiar because like a lot of times right now we're thinking about the crossover between what are the board game familiar aspects and what are the role playing yeah. aspects? And so anybody who's done a deck builder knows like, okay, some of these cards are filler cards. They're all helpful, but some are more helpful than others. Given the build of my character, that's really cool. I also loved the mechanic at the beginning of being able to add the Jack or the queen or the Jack and the queen. But then we have to take a, a, a bad card into our hand that will hurt us also too, which um, I just looked at mine when I was done and it was at the very bottom, which was awesome. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, my character like even had the ability to, when I was playing blind because of the Jack, I could flip over two cards and decide which one I wanted, which was a really cool thing for a geary resourceful character to have as an ability. A lot of fun things that match. Oh, yeah. I, I thought the mechanics just like everybody else was great. Um, it was really funny. I, when I first saw the system and read through some of the initial like description that you sent me, I was like, yeah. this sounds totally like a non-American designed game. And so hearing, <laughs> hearing where it came from and hearing some of the origin about like, Hey, it's this Italian one. It's it's, we've translated it over. Um, it's a very cool thing. And it's great to take a realistic setting and, or a, a real world setting and pull it out of the U S like it's not New York city. It's not Boston. It's not DC. It's not yes. Seattle. It's Florence, Italy, which for a lot of Americans, might as well be a fantastic realm that we've never experienced before. And yeah. <laughs> is also a mind-blowingly amazing place to go. There's this deep, rich sense of history. So you have these classic Western archetypes mixed with 1920s and 1950s vibes, which then evokes like 
weird fallout things, especially as we're going through trash piles, which then also brings out there's all these just horrible flesh automatons all over the place. And how do you yeah. feel about uh, any of that? Um, and for me, there was as soon as you told me this, I'm like, I immediately have thoughts and feelings about the morality of this world and how any of that would work. Um, and I love that at least for this intro adventure, that that's pushed to the forefront. Um, and so my question, I think, is actually like, um, is that a question that, that the game pushes mechanically? Like, is the, is the game asking you this question, what is, what is consciousness and what does it mean to experiment on the dead? Or is that something that you brought into the game because you like writing yeah. as a GM? So uh, the, the way the book is written is an interview between two individuals. Uh, and so the, all the information is presented from their perspective. Uh, though throughout the book, like us as, as creators and writers and developers put teasings and such in like these little small notes throughout the book that are like, that, that kind of questions some of the things that the the narrators are presenting uh, as fact. Uh, and so part of that, uh, especially in the book, it will be some QR codes or links to audio files that will that will completely bring into question, like, is this right? And, and what are the ramifications for it? Right. Um, That's there's, cool. There's also like a stretch that. goal that is another type of character you can play called the Children of the River. Uh, and the whole thing with them is that one person went out to the wilderness and actually had a very long and thorough conversation with a sentient construct. They come back with almost like a Moses on the mountaintop with like constructs are evil and they're really bad for humanity. Um, and and so that that kind of aspect becomes more of a thing uh, if you want to explore that avenue. So it, it's just kind of like the the type of game you want to explore and, and the focuses you want to have. Um, which is also one of my favorite parts about the game is all these different genres within uh, the game. But I always like teasing about the the construct mm -hmm. just because we we tease it in the book and we hope that people find like in question like this doesn't feel right. Yeah, you're like darn right it doesn't. I I love and here's what I love. I love that John just came in naturally with I'm a private dick, which like <laughs> which certainly created a little bit of an overt flavor. But as you like even as you were running, I was like, oh, we're massively dealing with unreliable narrator trope here, like which is a pastiche mm -hmm. and a central premise of noir is that whenever you're getting information, you absolutely have to question the validity of it as a viewer, like knowing that the, the character mm -hmm. has zero reason to, right? And so as a player, knowing like, yeah, none of this, like I was, I was ready for pod to be dead when we came back or to be, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to be a construct husband now or be whatever horrible mutilated thing happened or may have happened in the future. We don't know. Cause that we yeah. don't get a chance to explore that. But um, uh, like there was a strong, no, like that was the strongest vibe for me out of the whole thing was this solid noir feel that I, I was incredibly surprised by in the middle of everything else uh, mm -hmm. that was going on and just loved Loved that piece. Um, and so um, I'll have some more thoughts. We'll have, a, we'll have a full review that comes out later on. Um, but John, did you, did anybody else have any yes. questions? Uh, I, um, what things from the Kickstarter, like the stretch goals and stuff, are you most excited to see manifest? So my, my favorite um, is uh, a construct template. Um, and this will be one of the things, uh, we won't talk about much, but it'll be like the secret stretch goal. Uh, but the ability to, if your character dies during play to come back as a construct <laughs> to like, and that, you know, whether you want to be like, uh, have more flesh and stuff and like wake up during like the initial process or you're like post and you have like this leathery tan skin and like, there's a whole campaign that could just be centered on a bunch of individuals who have the construct template and trying to survive and figure out what the hell, what the purpose is of your place in this world. Yeah, so. Uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of like a, awesome. when the Punisher dies and comes back as Frankencastle briefly. In the world. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I can't also, wait. I just want to, that's great. I just want to, to say, Mitchell again. did a great job today. I, 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 you built that world Absolutely. from the opening Absolutely. scene super solid i was i was digging such a like but but it does also uh beg the question like for people who run games who are who want to be the gm mm -hmm. is there anything that that like this particular that that this game feels to lean have more heavily on like 
like that that narrative of unreliable narrator or the who you know like is is the the question the existential question of consciousness yeah. and all that stuff um but like it does feel like this could lend itself to i guess lighter gameplay as well you know uh do you feel like it there's there's enough there for like uh, for game masters to to kind of change a little bit yeah i uh I, I think the best example was uh friends who roll dice did a one shot and it was the thirstiest one shot i've ever <laughs> seen uh and it was it was a uh uh all like uh they she pronouns um uh cast and like uh all their characters were going through and finally the gm introduced a male character like an hour and a half in and they're like there's men in this setting like what what is this <laughs> they, they were totally digging like uh the amazonian like wonder mm-hmm. woman i guess uh perspective of the whole setting and so oh, like interesting yeah it was very it was more lighthearted and 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 thirsty and fun it was just like a, a group of friends like discovering romance with each other while also <laughs> like kicking butt uh and so it was it was just a lot of fun so um it, it's definitely and that's kind of why we uh we present the material in that way because uh, we we truly believe like there's so much genres that could be played with this setting um that it's really up to you as a gm to to play it and there's no wrong way to play it like i i'm super excited whenever i see someone take it in ways that i i had never imagined like i never imagined it to be so thirsty but i was like this is amazing and i'm here for it um, no, I, I love it. I, I think my question is also similar. Like for players, is there an advancement pathway in the game? Or are you picking your, like, what does advancement look like? Like, so let's say we had, we had leveled up or whatever, whatever, however it works. How, how, what is that process like? Yeah. So, um, you start to add more cards into your, your deck. Um, Bye. Uh, you you add more cards so you can you can get more flesh cards and start going up the thing. One of my favorite things though is to add more uh, jacks and queens to it, which are special abilities and such. So picking different special abilities and they're you're limited to the suit. So uh, for instance, if you had a special ability that deals with social stuff uh, or for the techno font, they have like the martial arts, which is more steel. Uh, you can't choose another one like that. You have to spread out and start going to like, what's your special thing with the mental field or the social field uh, or your your organizational stuff. So fleshing them out in that way as you continue to build your deck. Um, and so that's kind of one of my favorite aspects uh, during convention play and stuff like that. You'll be able to get your deck from home that you have that's special, like a Yu-Gi-Oh deck that you have, uh, and then bring it to a game and be like, this is my character that I've been playing for like the last two years or, or, or year and a half. Like, let's do this. This is, this is, this is let me join into this world uh, and, and use this deck of cards that I've become very familiar with, which represents my character. That's awesome. Um, I just love yeah. the idea that you're dropping down of like a Magic the Gathering card, a Yu-Gi-Oh card, a Pokemon card. Yeah. <laughs> And you're like, yeah, I I killed that construct, you know, like it's, yeah, yeah, it's very like, fun. Yeah. That sounds so cool. Yeah, or you could use the uh, there's a basic, I think it's basic trading card game jam happening right now, which is, is an open source mm-hmm. trading card game system. Uh, go just go build your own deck. Uh, no, I love it. We just dropped the link in the chat again. If you're watching this later uh, on YouTube, the chat will be the link will be down below uh, as well. I'm super excited for it. You said it launches May 12th. Is that correct? Yes. And, yes, uh, and right, what, right before my vax, my second vax. There we go. And what's uh, what's the what's your funding goal for the project? The funding goal is ten thousand. Awesome. Uh, so that will that will cover us, and everything after that will improve the quality, uh, more art. Uh, we have about eight writers, including Matthew Dawkins, who did a lot of the vampire masquerade stuff, and uh, uh, they came from the deep. Who's also writing an adventure. Uh, so just kind of expanding the stuff. We really want to. Uh, complete the custom cards uh which will be special for uh necrobiotic and yeah. kind of our far-reaching goal is to be like if you uh complete a special scenario during a convention you'll have a special card you can put into your deck which will reflect that very special moment that you can then take back home and play with your like with your local group and be like this is something special i got from the creators at a convention that's in now in the game that's cool uh and it stuff cool. like that so in the world like is so fleshed out that you know just 
the more people buy into it, the more like the fur I'm looking at like future kickstarters of like supplements about what happens like five years after the start of the game as as things continue to change and, and new new things shift so yeah. it's i'm so excited it's yeah, got solid ridiculous. core system and I, I i hope there'll be some plans for how you guys are going to do licensing for the system also too oh really, yeah yeah really that we would we'd love and love so, to see new content yeah so uh <laughs> awesome please go check it out uh you can use the link right below ttrpg.link slash necrobiotic ks it does work now um there was a slight adjustment in the page url so we, we got that updated but it'll go right there if you're watching this now or later or just search necrobiotic on kickstarter also or hit the link down below um until next time my name is tony vicinda uh, at plus one exp we're a weird little brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design beard and skincare alchemy and the bardic college of content creation uh we think that creators should be able to access our services for free uh so if you want to help support the channel you can go to uh uh, coffee.com slash plus one exp to go support us uh, here on the channel um, also if you're a creator who wants us to feature your game please let us know um, our, our hope our desire is really that we could help great players find uh, games that they can love by amazing creators and help amazing creators find great players who love their game here on the channel uh, so if you follow subscribe you'll see a lot of one shots by a lot of new systems or great old favorite systems uh, here on the channel you can find everything we do at plus one exp across all social media platforms or go to plus one exp.com to check out the games that we design uh, our bespoke uh, bombs and other stuff like that that are all inspired by tabletop uh, culture and then go back into helping us and other small creators make more games so until next time we're just gonna wave at the camera until i take us off stream Bye. Bye. i'm a construct in a construct oh my god <laughs>